Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast. The same Yay! as the old podcast, for the new most part. Nobody's gonna stop me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna let me. I was just, going. I was just gonna let it, let it slide and <laughs> peter out until its eventual failure. God, I should have just kept going. <laughs> the more you fill the show, the less we have to think. It's wonderful. More dancing. Yes, all of those things. Welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast, where we occasionally talk about video games, formerly known as the Game Station Podcast. The Game Station, as some of you may not be aware, no longer exists. It has been renamed to Polaris. However, the attempts to get me to call this the Polaris Podcast were met with failure when I pointed out accurately that then people would just call it PP. Exactly. The PP? Yeah, and no. And that is exactly why nope. I decided not to call it that. <laughs> what? <sighs> Whatever. The, the PP Podcast would have been great. <laughs> we could we could have called it the PP podcast with the biscuit buddies. My favorite choice, biscuit and friends, bis was biscuit buddies. <laughs> biscuit buddies. Biscuit buddies sounds so good. It's just we be the P we be the PP babies. Oh god, it sounds like a horrible children's TV show. It's not acceptable. <laughs> this is awful. This, this is the reason awful. why I don't listen I to your ideas, Jesse. I am already getting congratulations on Facebook on the success of my life for being on this show. <laughs> Considering the previous people we've had on this show, I have no idea why, but, but never mind. I think it was mostly because of the PPPBs. Yes, that's oh, it. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that on... I'm trying to think of the name of a kids' TV channel. I'm coming up blank for obvious reasons. Uh, Noggin. Yes, that was the name of it. Noggin. That's oh. it. That's it. <laughs> of course. Yes. My favorite. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Yep. I believe that is yep. where Yo Gabba Gabba is aired, alongside <gasps> other wonderful things. If you want to see a video that's offensive, that uh, you shouldn't watch with your children, many years ago, I took a Kanye West song, unedited, and put it together with Yo Gabba Gabba, and made a video, and put it on a YouTube channel before I had a YouTube. So it's out there on a secret channel. You should watch it. It has, it has uh, Elijah Wood going like this while people F-words are being used in the background. Incredible. <laughs> to this yeah. day, I get messages from angry parents who are like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> How dare so you corrupt. Yes. Enjoy it's that. Amazing. Internet. Indeed. So, Dodger, welcome to the show. What's been going on? Uh, it feels you, like it's been forever. You, well, you were in a box selling out I for a while. I was in a box. I was in a box selling out, being super corporate. Yeah, that was like probably one of the weirdest things I've ever agreed to do. But it was at the same time the same thing that I normally do. I was just in a, in a fake room <laughs> doing it. I was like, this is weird. I'm basically just, I mean, just sit there and talk at a camera. I'm pretty good at that. So but I had to do that eight hours a day from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yep. And that was super exciting. So I did that last week. And uh, now I'm getting ready to move. And I went to Comic-Con. There's been so much. But I'm glad to be back. Excellent. Thank you for having me. Jesse, congratulations on waking up this morning. Hi. <laughs> How are you? So I heard you sell. You got yourself into quite a food coma last night. Let's let's just say, when suspicious characters offer you baked goods, <laughs> you should wonder what's in this baked goods. <laughs> and this is why, ladies and gentlemen, we don't eat things that are sent in by viewers. Oh no! It, it, Precious pussy. Twas no viewer who sent me to send me that. <laughs> twas, a f twas a friend or former friend. No longer. <laughs> oh my. So yes, that 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 was an experience. So I am up now. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Oh. And our special guest, who is part of a show called Extra Credits and does many, many more things. I'll give him the chance to introduce all of he, or everything that he does. So he can do it better than I. James Portnoe, welcome to the show. Yay! Hey, everybody. So, um, man, introducing myself. What do I do? Uh, I'm a game designer. I've worked on games ranging from the Call of Duty series to Farmville. Um, I run a game design consulting firm. I hold a professorship down at DigiPen. Um, I write extra credits on Penny Arcade. Uh, I just launched Games for Good, which is a campaign to sort of change the dialogue around games from 
why games aren't bad to what good can games do because I think there's so much more we can get out of this medium and we have to stop uh, having having it be the whipping boy for everything. Um, and other than that, I gallivant around the world talking about education and how we can use games to do something more. God, Indeed. you're so much more legit than any of us. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's like, so, so what do we do? Well, we sit around talking about video games most of the day, and then we, we cash the paycheck, and then we sell out to Target. It's wonderful. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. I think I have a valuable message for the kids. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, after your uh, last valuable message for the yes, kids. Yes, yes. No, okay. I just want to point out, by the way, Jesse was a former teacher and educator of the youth, which is why the U.S. education system is in such shambles. But it's please all continue. Jesse's fault. <laughs> well, I went to a lot of meetings. They had me do a lot of talks. Like, what should we do, Mr. Cox? And I was like, eh, give them paperwork and go drink. That's America. That was the educational message for the kids. Was that, yeah, was that the... the oh, no, I was saying that all my... all. I feel like I'm connecting with them, with the kids. Yep. But he's disconnecting from the call. Yeah. Which is unfortunate, <laughs> but I'm sure... I was we'll like, ha- oh, you're frozen. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll have him back momentarily. Just yeah. a minute. This is probably just an excuse for him to get out of it. Anyway, as we continue on with the show, welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast. We occasionally talk about video games. The format is essentially identical to what we did previously, so you can expect the first hour to be about games we have been playing this week. James claims we don't know a single one of them. Uh, I consider that a challenge, so we'll see just how obscure they might be. I don't know if I said not a single one. I just said I don't know how interested people might be in the crazy indie business that, like, so I, in my days, block out at least 15 minutes a day to play something I haven't tried ever. Um, And so some of the stuff I get is kind of far afield. Sounds good to me. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm cool with that. It's like, yeah, we're playing a bit more Assassin's Creed 3. It's been really interesting. (laughs) No, we'll go with that. That sounds like a plan. Trying to get Jesse back is always hilarious. Come on, Jesse. <laughs> Lost him so early. Lord. Very early. Yeah. Earlier than usual. <laughs> I usually lose his attention span about 30 minutes into the show, but we've only been on for 10, so I don't know about that. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure we'll get him back eventually. So I guess we will start the way that we usually do by talking about what we've been playing this week. Uh, at that point, we will take a break. And after that, we'll be talking about the news, of which there is quite a lot, it would seem. So we'll be covering that and seeing how that goes. And after that's done, we'll have a look at some trailers. We have some interesting stuff, to say the least. Excellent. Jesse's back. And we, (laughs) Yeah, fun times. And (laughs) we will also discuss a few host topics. And then we'll round off the show. Simple as that, really. The uh, Twitch is being particularly bad today, so there's not really a huge amount we can do about that. But that's why we put the VOD up on YouTube. So... Let us begin, shall we? Talking about what we've been playing this week. Well, Dodger, I don't see. I don't think you've had any time to play anything this week, by the sounds of it. I haven't played anything aside from like house. my normal things. I did. I played house like a four-year-old. Um, lots of battle cats since I haven't been home. And then after I went to Comic Con, at Comic Con they had this huge um, TF2 chess set. And ah, I, yes. I'm I kept like going back and looking at it because I was so I was trying to figure out whether or not you could remove the tops that denoted like which chess piece they were, and you totally can. You can swap them, and it comes with like totally different rules. And that got me excited about TF2, so I came home and played a bunch of TF2. But I, you're right. I Marketing haven't been... successful. Well done. <laughs> but I haven't. Uh, I haven't really been playing a lot of new stuff you know i, I noticed you, ca- you kind of slipped in battle cats in there without explaining remotely what you were talking about i couldn't so. remember if i've talked about battle cats I before i don't recall you doing that battle cats is great it's a free game and uh it's on your phone and let's see done it now it's great it's there a great go. game i don't know whether or not you'll be able to see it but in very very low resolution probably yes you can give it a try so, well, I see the word is, cats. That's a start. Yeah, battle right. cats, and these are all a bunch of cats. the The story of it is that we decide that the best sort of army that we can make that nobody will want to fight is a bunch of cats. So we like genetically mutate all of these crazy cats and okay. send them out into battle. But then our enemies have like 
genetically crazy like dogs and things that we fight against. So, so this is the main menu, and we're opening it up to the map, and then we hit battle. That and is the like, dumbest yeah. looking cat I've seen in a long time. I know, isn't it great? And then, and so this is what it looks like, and you just you have to like manage your resources and figure out which cats you need at any given moment. This is some so crazy like, Japanese game, isn't it? Because this looks super derpy. I don't know who made this game, but it's brilliant and it's, it's by free, Ponos, it would say. And I love it. it. I love this game so much. Um, I've I've upgraded all of my cats all the way. So they've all like transformed into new cats. And <laughs> it's just okay, I'm gonna stop. It's it's really, really fun. Um, one of the cats that you can get is basically like like hot lady legs, but with a cat body on top. <laughs> And she right. like she like walks out there very slowly and then kicks your enemies back so they can't get to your base. It's great. This game is amazing. <laughs> so I think I think everybody should play it. That's that sounds incredible. It's I'm just I'm watching the the very slowly scrolling backstory of this. Half of it appears to be misspelled. Oh yeah 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 yeah. It's it's most. Why no, the new weapon is cat? He answered, <laughs> "I love pussy cats." I know it's insane. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to find some gameplay. Apparently, this is a story trailer that goes on for a long time. The HD yeah, gameplay trailer is 20 minutes long. Question. Yeah, the story trailer. The story is important. Yeah. Question. Yes, Jesse. The premise of this game <laughs> is that the Japanese people are too peaceful, and so America is like, "Hey, dum dums, stop making peace." And make death cats? I don't. <laughs> what? No, no, no. We made death cats and sent them to Japan. To because to we train think the we Japanese? think that no, we think that the Japanese won't gonna... fight against the cats because the cats are too adorable and love cats too much. So wait, are we playing as Americans fighting yes. Japanese cats? I think we are America fighting Japan. So the premise of this game is we're sending in nuclear cats to <laughs> invade <laughs> Japan. And that's the premise? Yep. I'm yes. fairly sure it's really made that's... in Japan. <laughs> Wait. It's the weirdest game, but it's very fun. You you have I... played worse, Jesse. Come on. I was about to say, I just I just spent all week playing a game made in Japan about like first century China, where all of it is it's rock music and stuff, so yeah. In other words, you play weird. Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the new one's so good. Shh. It's the exact same, but it's so good. It's <laughs> so good. I haven't played it yet. I bought it, though. There's been a surprising amount of positive remarks about the new Dynasty Warriors game. I mean, yes. It, I read Jim Sterling's report on it, and I'm like, well, Jim Sterling's a massive Dynasty Warriors fanboy, so I'm not really sure if I can take that seriously. But he's like, no, no, it's it's really, it's actually an improvement. Like, really, huh. it really is. You can you can have multiple weapons now, so you can do all sorts of like combo switches and stuff, which is uh, wonderful. Yeah, they need. Oh that. yes, and and the story is pretty much the same, but they have two modes. So there's story mode, which is like every map you only get to choose between certain people to play. Yeah. But then there's also a mode that's like uh, you're taking over the world mode, so you can play as whoever the hell you want. That's not free mode, so it's sort of like. The, the Dynasty Warriors Empires or whatever it was in there. Like a, a not really version, but it's fun. It's fun. And then you can play yeah. as all the characters and then, oh, they added new characters. Oh, and then they, oh, everyone, this is wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. This, this, this still very much sounds like something that someone that didn't really follow the Dynasty Warriors series would have no interest in playing. Oh, I mean, no, if, if you, there's a lot of moments where I'm like, if you hadn't played the last seven, <laughs> you would have no clue what was happening right here. I was I'm wondering that because like the story like continues to try to expand or like references itself. I'm like, God, but it's getting to the point now where like only Dynasty Warriors fans can play these games. So the problem with that series is from the outset, it, I mean, the target audience was actually people in Asia who had read Three Kingdoms right. because I mean, it's mm -hmm. such a common uh, and the game makes so much more sense if you've read it, but that assumption is, is there and still to this day persists. It's just worse now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because there's some so, things like there's, there's characters that in this one that they mention events 
that if you hadn't ex either read it or experienced it in a previous game, like uh, one of my favorite ones is the um, like the Xiao Yun baby little story, right? Where he's like, I'm running through an omnibus with the baby. And I feel like <laughs> this one, they're like, oh yeah, no, just throw that, just throw that in there. And so like, you have to run back and like Handman's like, oh master, it's amazing. But <laughs> it's, everything's like really mm. half-ass referenced. Like they, uh, if you saw, I think it was Red Cliff. Yeah, Red, Cl one, Red Cliff, which is fantastic. I might add. Uh, they basically verbatim steal that entire movie for that chunk of the game. And so they even have like the scenes where they're, like they're all plotting together and like cut scenes. And I'm like, they really are happy about themselves that this became really popular all of a sudden. So well, Red Cliff again is one chapter or close to three right, chapters right, right, of uh, Three Kingdoms, right? So. It's it, that work is so pervasive in a lot of this stuff. So second, like PSA for the kids, go read Three Kingdoms. It's awesome. Yes. <laughs> if you don't have time for that, then watching Red Cliff is not the worst thing you could do. It's actually very, very good indeed. Great I movie. enjoyed that immensely. I did also watch the extended version, which is about four and a half hours long, and it it's was still worth good. It. It's yes. still good. Yeah. Is yep. Three Kingdoms not like super dense? Three uh, Kingdoms is. Fairly. I mean, it's like any saga right like it's got a lot of lists of names but other than that i mean it's it's like i'm actually looking at my bookshelf uh it is two books worth two paperback okay. books that size so it's not too bad it's shorter than the lord of the rings i was gonna say yeah Fair. if if you, can, if you can do Tolkien, you can do you can do i can't read, I can't yeah. read Tolkien. <laughs> But the thing is, is that in, 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 in like the, the Romance of Three Kingdoms, the best part is, is all those names that are listed eventually get really awesome deaths like, that are yes. hilarious. Like just over the top, like deaths that you're like, wait, how did he die again? Like that doesn't seem possible. It's wonderful. Like, like he got a boil and the boil bled and he bled to death from the boil coming out of his eye. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, it's, um, it's amazing. So... It's a good read. And, and it makes... Cow Cow is the man. Cow Cow is so awesome in the books. And uh, I, the... I love how they make him the straight up villain in the games. Like they're like, he look, he's the bad guy in the games. He's the bad guy. It's like, is he? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> screw, screw the purple team, go so. shoe. And you're just like, yay, go shoe. <laughs> I love it. Uh, how those games are a blast though. Yeah, so the new one's great, and they change a lot of stuff, but it's a lot of the same, and it looks graphically like you can tell. It's kind of similar to the last one, so you know they're like, wait till 9 when it's on the PlayStation 4. And then you're just like, yes, all the dust <laughs> particle effects. But the thing they did, they made the weapons, they made all the different weapons actually move differently now. So you know how there's usually like multiple variations of a spear, right? Well, they have... The spears that like wobble, like like the warming spears, and they have like the ones that that are like you can. There's multiple spears now. They like up the ante a bit. Incredible so upgrade to the series. Multiple spears. <laughs> multiple exactly spears. what I was looking for. What? You know, that's what pushed me over the edge to getting that. It's worth that. I don't know. I mean, it's not that I don't like the idea behind it. I very much like the idea behind Dennis Duarez. I just feel that it was so poorly executed every single time. Like, I genuinely feel like 99 Nights, the original, was better than any of the Dynasty Warriors games in terms of just how well they executed the combat. Uh, it was hard as balls, and it was definitely unfair in places, but in terms of you are a super-powered hero that cuts his or her way through thousands of foot soldiers at a time... I think that 99 Nights did it better than Dynasty Warriors did because it just had a better move set. It had more enjoyable combat. The AI wasn't brain dead most of the time. You know, it's... Oh, but that's one of the joys of Dynasty Warriors is just like though. standing there and having them like walk up to you and be like, they're afraid of like, you because you're- sit here, just hit me. <laughs> it's the worst, best. You're worst. legendary warrior, Hung Guy. That's not how you pronounce his name really, but that's how I like to pronounce it. Hung Guy. And they're like, <laughs> Something's no. wrong. Oh, I don't know if we can fight this guy. And you're like, Rah! and then you just slash through like twelve of them. I'm, I'm telling you, if you need to play Dynasty Warriors, play. I think it's four. Was the last time they used the wrong pronunciations. So that's when you get great names like Cow P and Hung Guy 
and just all these great like now they're like shout p and i'm like oh you're trying stop it <laughs> stop it it was funny before <laughs> oh I, yes. I, I might try it i don't know i mean i've I always wanted to dip into it every now and again and then just didn't bother. Did you ever play Blade Storm back at the beginning of like the PS3? I played the era? demo and I never I never got around to buying the full game of it. I I've heard mixed things about it. So, it wasn't actually good, but it had a bunch of really interesting design innovations that I keep wishing Dynasty Warriors would use. Like, that's like, what, four, five, six years old now? Um, I also keep wanting Dynasty Warriors to go to other ages because, like, the Hundred Years War Dynasty Warriors was awesome. But Yeah, I was about uh, to say, that was pretty great. But then again, then they'd have to make whole new assets, right? Now they can just retexture them a little bit and, and make the here's twenty new guys Dynasty to play. Warriors Gundam game or Was whatever. It, wasn't the uh, uh, Warriors Orochi three hyper is yes. is <laughs> just that's that's the game you want because that game is like we're gonna time travel to all the, you you like this character from the series they're in screw it they're in it's like now this I can play and then the bad guys <laughs> a demon dragon so that seems historical. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, not, a, not a series I think I'll be spending too much time with. What else have you played, Jesse? Oh, bother. Uh, <laughs> I, am, I am loving Omicron the Nomad Soul. Uh, hooray, David insane. Cage! And so that's fun. I'm trying to think what else. I, I, I have Magic 2014 on my desktop. I've been dicking around with that a little bit. I... Find it very funny that now, like, it's like this is the Chandra game, so yeah, deal with. It. Yeah, pretty much. It's like we you know we we felt that this game needed a face. Like, really, I'm more interested in the cards, but they they have you a know, face. You know, so there's Se a story Seal, to it now. Seal plays killer though. Like, that's the best thing they've ever put in a Magic game outside of the it's... original Magic by Microprose, which was fantastic. So... Yeah, so good. Wow, you you know, the idea of just game, like. Yeah, exploring to find cards and having like an overworld and things like that. It was amazing. That was insane. I'm not going to lie. Remade, remade that. I know that I, I, missed, I missed a few of the betas here and there, so I'm not nearly as far as most people in it, but Final Fantasy fourteen. I'm starting to dig that thing. Like A, a lot. lot of people are saying that it's a, a lot. huge I really like it. Yeah. I do I not think to... I would. I, I So I have to get to it. It's not one I've gotten to try yet. What's different? What have they revamped? Um, I, I, I didn't play anything but like an early demo of the first version, and I remembered like five minutes in being like, "This is garbage." And so <laughs> this time, um, it just feels a lot more fluid. It feels more like Final Fantasy XI, just okay. but simplified, and less like a, a, like an overcomplicated mess of like you have to do this in order to do this and this but uh they keep you constantly uh doing things but i think a, a lot of mmos like eventually you just like pressing one button spam to get stuff done this like for example as a mage uh, if you cast like when you first start you get you can you by level 10 you get like four spells and those four spells all have to interact with each other in order for you to be effective so you're like if you are casting fire if you cast fire once you get like fire orbies around you and those the more you cast a fire spell the more damage it does over time but it also drains more mana so if you keep casting you're just no oh, it's just like arcane blast people. in uh yeah world of warcraft so you're just destroying people and then you have to switch to ice and, and so ice will then put an icy orby thing around you and that gains you gain mana back and so Eventually, you get a this thing. This really is like wow. <laughs> they really did nick right? a few elements right? from that. And so, and and so then you have another one which lets you switch between those two auras. Because of course, if you switch to ice, you have one time where you don't have any orbies up, and so you have to like switch back and forth. And then they have like a, they they basically stole all these great elements from other MMOs and were like, let's put it in here and just really simplify it. And the gameplay is much more fluid now. Uh, the world's better. They stole the rift system, which I think is hilarious. So yeah. now there are battles that like appear at random places, but it's against either waves of monsters that are attacking something or uh, like a named monster. And there was a, a named um, cactar. First off, they look hilarious. 
And so they, they run in, and you get, like, the whole battle music, and it's everyone joined together. And it, I think the music sells the game. The music's so good. They uh, I feel like they took music from other Final Fantasy games. I can't prove this yet, but <laughs> they took, like, the best ofs and either redid them or... Uh, I, I don't know, but it's fantastic. And I didn't, th I honestly didn't think I would like it, but I think I'm only level 21, 22. So I can't say for sure if it's actually any good. Cause I'm one of those people like when I get to end game, then I can tell you if yeah, uh, exactly. it was good. Yeah. So right now it's fun, but I can't say the end game will be any different than the end game of Final Fantasy 11, which was like 120 people need to take down a flying saucer. And it's going to take you 12 hours. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, no. Although to be fair, many people really liked that element to it. You know, they just it's said. True. What I had did. a good friend who used to say that Final Fantasy XI was the best game ever made after you'd put 120 hours in. It it, it really got I I enjoyed it because it had it had a story that was better than dare I say better than the Star Wars Old Republic story. Yeah. It, it was yeah. it was it was really good story that went over three four expansions before they went to a new story arc. But it was so good because every time you thought you beat it, there was like another layer of like, hey, guess what? Those guys who are your friends, they were fucking using you the entire time. Like that, that kind of stuff. It was so good. And you're just like, I got to keep playing. Even though this game, even though I picked a Dragoon and no one likes me in their party, I still got to keep <laughs> playing. That was, that, was, that, was two, that was two years of my life. <laughs> And then WoW came along, and I was like, well, I don't need anyone for this. Yeah, pretty much. That sounds like WoW in a nutshell, even more so now. Uh, the missus is playing more WoW these days, and just like, oh, uh, so what guild are you raiding with? Oh, I'm not. I don't need a guild to raid anymore. I just do pickup yeah. raids. Like, oh, yeah. oh, great. That's, that sounds wonderful. By the way, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, big shout out to Blizzard, because they had some of the best swag there. By far. Oh my gosh, I'm the By worst far. roommate in the world. I my roommates were texting me and they were like, "Look, there are zerglings that turn into banelings that turn into zerglings, and They're if the you can get one, swag. get us one." And I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna go over there right now and see like what the sitch is for these." And of course, it said, "You know, restocking." And I was like, "I'm assuming you're not gonna restock these today." And they were like, "No, we'll have these back in here in the morning." but come early because they normally don't last more than 30 minutes. And I was like, oh God. So I got there super early, got in line. I was like, all right, I'm ready. And <laughs> did not get one. <laughs> they they had, little, so they had those little, they had those little, they had the little chibi like uh, Sylvanases that were very like disturbingly evil cute. They, yeah. the thing that I loved is they had the lanyards that were the purple lanyards that was like epic lanyard of center of attention or whatever it was. It was like, by equipping this, you become a center of attention. And uh, that was amazing. And then they had all the guys who write all the books there. And so I got them to sign a book in the most over the top way possible by writing me. Um, I think you, you saw this, right? They, me? I, I, yeah. Uh, there's, there's, I got, it's a children's book, but it's signed by all the writers and artists, but they're all writing me old Civil War letters. And so it's like, it was Jesse the Wolf, Pandarian Aggression. <laughs> it's so funny. It's, the first three pages are all letters. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's like, you guys have too much time. But it, I had a blast. So good on them. They rocked it. Uh, they. It was weird. I don't know if they had anything to promote. <laughs> they, were just, they were just there selling stuff. I was like, okay, People sure. People tripping balls. Uh, yeah, I, I heard there was a bit of, bit of Hearthstone there, but not too much. Uh, we still don't know. I, I got an email last week, I believe, where they're, they're just mass emailing fan sites and influencers saying that, you know, if you wish to get into the public beta, then register with us. But I don't know how indicative that is of when that's actually happening. I know Friends and Family Alpha has already begun, uh, but that could last for an indefinite amount of time. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know what's going on. And, and I guess we finally got what a clip of the uh, of a movie. Yes, a, a apparently, movie. which yep, yep, did yep. No, no one, one will see. No one managed to somehow sneak a filming of that in. No, I haven't been able to find. There's not a single anything. clip. No one I, managed I, to get out a cell phone and film yeah. that bloody clip. Nobody. I, I'm convinced it never imagine. happened. I'm convinced that what happened is they got people in a room and then they paid them all to claim that there was a clip <laughs> for this movie played. Because there's no way in a million years that would not have got out some way if they hadn't. It's that a conspiracy, I tell you. Amazing. It's a conspiracy. It, 
Yeah. It, look, I've always said for years, the reason why you have to have those authenticators is because Blizzard's hacking your own account to make you spend $6 to buy an authenticator. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <sighs> yeah, that's why it is. <laughs> It's definitely not an evil Asian conspiracy. Still, <laughs> what are they going to do? Evil Asian conspiracy. That's nice, isn't it? No stereotypes there. We got to start this podcast out right. <laughs> I want it to be tainted forever as the one thing that is Nice. I rebranded the show hoping to get away from the casual racism, and you bring it right back into the <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, oh, I'm trying to think about what the else. game where Americans use cats to kill Japanese people. I mean, come on. That, fair, okay. Fair oh, assessment. We're killing your cats that are killing dogs. Oh, that makes Stop. it totally it's, better. Thanks for that. It's Japanese so dogs? What else? Um, I'm trying to think of what else was at Comic Con that was like gaming like, related. They, the other, the other big gaming thing that most of the people that I know were really interested in was standing in line to play Dark Souls 2. Okay. Um, and they all did it multiple times, so apparently it was fun. <laughs> Evidently. Uh, uh, also, the Xbox One and PlayStation Four, like not hidden away, were just like there, and people were playing on them, which yeah, I thought was really funny. Them. I was like, yeah. E3, not so much here. Look at them, touch them, feel them, do what you want to them. Mm. Yeah, they're getting to that point where they're willing to actually show the bloody things, which is nice. There was actually an Xbox One, or at least we think it was an Xbox One. It was most likely a PC in a box that was at MLG uh, with Killer Instinct. Mm. Uh, but there was only one of them, so yeah, it didn't God. go down too well. Uh, I that believe was... there were a couple of panels there as well. Xbox did a panel... They talked about the Kinect a little bit. They spoke on the subject of the fact that it will now work in rooms that are smaller than your average castle. And you will be able to use it at, I believe, a minimum range of one meter, which is not too shabby. Oh, I, I'm not going to plug that into a converter. I'll just take your word for it. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, oh, come on. I, I just realized, oh, Americans. Right. Yeah. It's like one meter. No, you know what? Never mind. Uh. That, that would this be, would be the time when I'm like... <laughs> that would be 4.5 freedoms, Jesse. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, perfect. Wonderful. Yeah, you know, excellent. Now you understand the distance. Always. I do. There's, James, there's... what have you been playing this week? <laughs> Good dodge. Um, let's see. I played uh, Memories of Broken Dimension. Okay. Which is some bonkers business, which I can't even begin to describe. Uh, could you could you try go, and begin to describe it though? Uh, no. Uh, um, well, screw that then. On to the next game. All right, done. <laughs> uh, no, memories of broken dimension. I can't begin to describe it because it starts on like a DOS screen with you like bringing back a I guess satellite that something very strange in outer space happened with, but some reason is running on DOS still and works with DOS commands. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. And then you, like, jump into <laughs> this weird 3D, very, like, um, uh, I guess, black and white but matrixy space where you're recreating the world. And it's very visually i mean the visual aesthetic of it is very engaging uh, it's not finished yet and mm -hmm. so we'll see where that goes um i paid a played a ton of papers please papers please is awesome yes it papers, is please is yes yeah. cool uh um, oh we've all don't worry we've all played that it's yeah. <laughs> good no really i was great. i want to make because like I can't talk enough about that game. Like the fact that it can show us that even the most mundane activity can be made engaging through games and not lose its meaning mm -hmm. is an incredible thing. And then all the moral choice in that game that's hidden in the system itself rather than stuck in dialogue trees was incredibly compelling to me. Um, and like I went back through a second time and saw all the stuff that I hadn't realized were choice moments. The first time I uncovered one of them by making a choice that went against what the game was telling me to do, and I thought I was going to get penalized for it, and I did, but at the same time, it unlocked other things. Yeah, and you, you got a benefit from it in another way, whether it be a benefit in terms of the specific game systems themselves or a benefit in terms of, well, that was a feel-good moment for me. Well, it... The great thing is it was not only a feel-good moment, but it did actually, the game acknowledged and recognized yes. those moral choices. I'm not going to spoil them here because I think no. that everybody Everyone on the other side it. of this camera should play Papers, Please. It's free, and like it's not complete yet either, but it's pretty awesome. Um, 
Otherwise, uh, I've been playing some Rogue Legacy. Um, what a dick and of a that game. one's seriously. <laughs> oh, that game. Uh, dude, Metroidvania procedurally generated? Like, how can you go wrong, right? <laughs> spikes um, is the answer to that. Lots of spikes. <laughs> That's how you go wrong. Uh, but what else? Uh, Eador Genesis, not their new one because their new one is just a s smaller 3D version of their previous one. But Eador is this crazy, like, uh, Heroes and Might and Magic. It's kind of Age of Wonders, I yeah. Right, but with infinite content. Like, I was shocked. I, like, it it never seems to be done rolling out just new content for you. Um, and actually, it's one of the things I've been really liking about a lot of the Russian games I've been seeing developed is, I guess just because dev costs are lower there, they, I keep seeing games that are from genres we call dead that they bring back and then yes. deliver with infinite content. It's so good. It makes me so happy. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, great example of that would, of course, be the uh, the, the King's Bounty stuff. You know, that's right. probably one of the most obvious examples of just, hey, this was a really, really old progenitor of the Heroes of Might and Magic series. How about we bring it back and make it so damn good that you'll probably want to play this over the new home games? Yes. It, really good. I, I think so. Uh, Elven Legacy is another one. I mean, even even Wargaming with World of Tanks, right? Yeah. Like, um, that, when was the last time you saw a US-made tank game, right? Um, but, uh, let's see, other than that, um, that's been... Most of it. I've been hopping on Guns of Icarus with a bunch of my buddies. Such a good game. Uh, hey, love everyone here is, loves it. I I want to make sure we like give them a shout out because those guys totally deserve more people playing their yes, game. They do. And if for anybody who doesn't know, it's a steampunk uh, airship combat game with asymmetric roles where you and your buddies run around the ship desperately trying to keep it afloat while uh, knocking people out of the sky. And it's it's a fantastic time. I mean. You may not you may not play for weeks on end like you might with some FPSs or whatever, but if you're looking for a good time for a couple of hours with three of your buddies, it's, <coughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it is very much a game which requires team play in the extreme kind of style, as in if you don't have a team that's working together, you will be destroyed repeatedly since you are all required to try and crew the ship. And the cool thing about it is that if there's one person that's kind of not doing their job, then it doesn't matter how good the rest of them are. It, you're still going to fail horribly. You need to keep that ship in the sky. I love the idea of running around on the ship and the fact that there are more stations than there are players. So you yeah. have to make choices about which weapons you're firing at any particular time. Mm -hmm. And all three of us actually were involved in a big Battle Royale event a couple of months ago for this. Nice which there was actually a promotional event for them and it was great fun it was awesome i Super loved fun. every last minute of it dude jumping I... from deck to deck swinging a wrench desperately trying to put out fires How yeah that's wrong, me right? that's me <laughs> <laughs> every time i play that game all, all i I'm... want now is guns of icarus but star trek that's that's what i want that would Have be you... incredible. yes that uh, would be amazing you, are you about to uh... mention artemis bridge simulator by any chance yeah have you you played artemis I have not, but I want to. I really do. So, you should play Artemis, and here's how uh, I, I sometimes at, at DigiPen have occasionally run games of Artemis, and here's how we do it. So, you get uh, at least four full ships worth of people. The communications officer is the only one who gets a headset, so they can talk to the other communications officers, but nobody else can hear anything from the other ships. So they have okay. to relay all the information to everybody else there. And then you have a third room somewhere off to the side where you just have your other DM running. And we do away missions where you have to choose two of the crew to leave the crew oh, wow. and go to a away mission while the rest of the crew has to deal with stuff in space, right? Um, and that game is just a blast, right? It's D&D &D meets Star Trek meets uh, Icarus. It's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, that it really awesome. is. awesome. It's incredible. It really is. But it does require a group of people and significant setup time. And it's got to be done kind of in the same room, really. It's not something you can really play offline. Ah, we just lost Jesse. Oh, well, never mind. It's okay. He was irrelevant to this discussion anyway. We'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, Artemis is one of those games that does invoke the idea that you can play a pen and paper style with that kind of infinite creativity, but in a world with video game rules. And it's one of the few ones that does it well, as far as I'm concerned. 
It's really, really fantastic. I love the idea of it, but we have never got to play it. And if we did play it, lots of people would require us to film it and we'd have to figure out a way to do it that actually looked good. Oh, that's if true. there was any way to get everybody in the same area, like if you're ever this side, I would totally GM a game for you guys. Hey, because... every, where is it that you currently live? Uh, Seattle. Seattle, that's... Pax. We are at PAX. Yeah, you want to come to PAX? Uh, we we're, we're all at PAX, yeah. I think, aren't we? Yeah, we're all at PAX to do a panel, so we could do that. Uh, I am I get thoughts. the extra credit screw to run a second ship. I'm having thoughts. <laughs> And, th and oh, the the, the the Polaris film crew will be there as well to film our panel. I got That's ideas. Also true. You, I, I don't want to. I, I hate promising this stuff in the podcast because it never happens. But right, yeah, then, we need yeah, to think about that. That might. We're work. officially not promising the awesomest At game all. Parts of all time. Yeah. We well, are not promising it, but I'm hoping that it does happen. We'll see if we can get it together. But again, not promising a damn thing. Offline, we should actually talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's have words. <laughs> I yeah. miss. I keep missing everything. Oh, what are you man. talking about? We're talking about Artemis Drift <laughs> Simulator, Jesse. You'll have to look that up because it's really quite the thing. But I, if I, I've just roped you in. Uh, you, you can be the weapons officer. We're gonna play a game, Jesse. Can I dress like? Can I dress like Commander Worf? Oh my God! It's happening. It's <laughs> happening. I'm gonna get. Um, yes, to be you honest. absolutely can. can. In fact, you must. <laughs> Oh, I it will. It is required. Right. right. But it's part of the rules of the game. Where did TP oh. go? I looked down for one second. <laughs> I uh, Here's what's happening on my end is I'm sitting here, like, listening to you guys talk, and all of a sudden, it's just a silence. And your voices are moving like, uh, something's happening right now. And then you stop moving. I'm like, oh, this is not good. And then I'm like, well, maybe I'll restart the call. And the, like, Skype's like, no. Look at them. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden it just drops me, and I'm like, oh. Oh, well, come on. Good, that was a good five minutes. Thanks. Uh, okay. That's what I'm doing. One. So, TB, that's a guy. He left. No, apparently it's not. He uh, doesn't want to talk about the games that he's played. Uh, are we Are we still talking about Guns of Icarus? Because no, Sky we Captain talking, Maximilian I mean, Valentine could be. will return. I mean, we can, we can revert. We can revert back. I got more Russian games I can talk about. Pathologic's amazing. Oh if my! Any of you guys are, that you got it. That? Yeah, so you talk. Pathologic. I don't want to talk about Pathologic. I I barely dipped into it, and it's nuts. It's bonkers. What? Hold on, right. I'm looking it up. So, Pathologic. If any of you are out there looking for a good um, survival horror game, like that's more akin to old school Silent Hill or Fatal Frame. What? Uh, Pathologic is, is pretty fantastic. Translation's a little bit rough, but- Award-winning 2005 psychological horror video game. Yes. Oh, the cover is so creepy. Okay, sorry, continue. Oh no, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> has, has a town built around a giant abattoir. That's all you need to know. Yeah, Pathologic is a very strange thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you should have a look at it. Uh, Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Two men, Bachelor and Haru Specs, and a girl nicknamed Devotress, each of whom tried to uncover the source of a strange lethal sickness that befalls a small town. Oh, no. Although you can play as each of them, there's only one storyline. Oh, interesting. Oh, so it's, it's kind of like the plot of Fahrenheit, where you're playing as the criminal yeah. and the cops. Kind of. Yes, but, but the end doesn't spiral off into nothingness. Yes, <laughs> the dog didn't eat the script halfway Whoa, through. Whoa, spoiler! Whoa! First off, <laughs> first off <laughs> don't you dare say- Fahrenheit was perfect. Awful. Everything Fahrenheit David was the Cage... first and only game I played with necrophilic sex in it. Indeed. And yep. remains that way to this day, <laughs> thankfully. But... I rest my case. <laughs> that, that game was, for the first good four hours of that game that game was incredible and then then something horrible happened well that's because the emperor came after you with his flea army and you had to fight him off in your office space and then you learned to fly look it's a great game <laughs> david cage is a golden god of video game making say nothing you homeless people are the internet that game <laughs> uh. Uh, did you ever read his post-mortem on that game no he literally uh. says Oh, you know, nobody gets the end of video games, so we were just like, screw it. <laughs> that sounds about right. 
That's like, yeah, so but I was compelled, funny. but I got to the end of Heavy Rain because Wait. I was compelled to. And then I didn't get to the end of Fahrenheit because it got bad. I actually stopped at the stupid army-based stealth segment that was horribly implemented. Oh, where you play as the kids and you're like, oh, it's watch dreadful. out for the lights. Dreadful. Oh segment. my God. I watched Jesse's playthrough of that part. And it was just Jesse being like, what is happening? Like, Why is this here? So this is angry. horrible. <laughs> and, 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 and the best part is, is your little children on an army base. And I get that you're like the kids of people who work there, but it's still in the middle of the night, you're in a secure sector and they're just like, oh, you kids go back to bed. And then you try it again. Like, no, no, you'll be thrown in, in kid prison jail. <laughs> you, they would, they would stick the dogs on your ass, but whatever. Oh, dear. It was the 50s, a different time. Yeah, I mean, you just compare that segment to, you, you remember the bit at the start where you've got to hide evidence yeah. from the cops? That was incredibly good. It was it was a really nice, really tense piece of gameplay. People will complain yeah. that that game's and uh, Heavy Rain's all QTE. It isn't. Like, there's a lot of QTE stuff, but that was more like a timed point-and-click puzzle. And well, in that one, even, like, putting dialogue on timers was a fantastic piece of gameplay innovation, yeah, right? Like it really putting was. that pressure. And we saw it in Walking Dead, right? Like Walking yeah. Dead brought that to the next logical level, but like it was introduced in Fahrenheit. Yeah. Yeah. And the picture in picture, which they did incredibly well and yeah. again moved into heavy rain as well. It's yeah, I those there were some really great gameplay elements in Fahrenheit. And then the game just went off the rails halfway through, which was really, really annoying. But there you go. I love it. Yep, I'm, as a result, looking forward to Beyond Two Souls. We'll see where that yes. goes. Yes. Here's the thing. They're they're dialing it back on the ads. Like, I can't wait. Because the original ad was like, you know, it's a bald girl with, like, fire powers. And now it's like, I'm in the military and I have a ghost buddy. Nothing weird about this game yet. I can't <laughs> wait. At some point, it's going to become bonkers. <laughs> and I'm going to be there for it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Amazing. I just hope it's possible to just entirely fail. Like when it comes down to failure states, those two games did an incredible job of it. You could screw up Heavy Rain so incredibly badly, and the game wouldn't apologize to you for it either. And that was g wonderful. Man. <laughs> Jesse, didn't you stand in line to play that game and they interviewed you? Yeah. You just yelled so David much... Cage is a golden god at the interviewer. <laughs> Uh, E3, I, I don't know, I don't know if this if it's footage that exists, but E3, I guess they have, like, a post-wrap-up thing they do, like, a video they send out to, like, people, like, this is what E3 is like. And so they came up to me, camera crew and all, and I'm in line for Beyond Two Souls, and they're like, so what do you think about this game? And I'm like, David Cage, the golden god! And they were like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they were like, so you're into this? And then I was like, oh my god, this will be the best game ever made. Guys, you don't even understand. And they're just like, all right. <laughs> well, this has been good. <laughs> and, like, and that will be why it was never read. <laughs> yeah. I kept being like, oh, I just want there to be a cut that had it in there. And they were like, we've got to, I don't know, just get rid of that part. I want them to use that in the Christmas video. <laughs> like, Merry <laughs> Christmas. You have a kid going again. Oh, man. That's, that's uh, a wonderful, horrible thing. Okay. Oh. <sighs> All right. What have I been playing that I can actually talk about? Because I want to talk about Shadowrun and I can't. I'm embargoed till midnight, uh, which is annoying because this podcast will probably hit YouTube on Friday. And yeah. it'll already have been out. So I'll say, go watch the video that's already been made that is airing in the future, which is going to be on the channel Ow. at 12 p.m. on Thursday. So basically midnight tonight. That's EDT. And that'll have my full opinions on that game. I'm not allowed to talk about it otherwise. Which sucks, because I got a lot to say about that game. But there you go. What else have I actually been playing? I got back into Planetside. That was, oh, yeah? Yeah, that was a thing. Uh, I haven't played in quite some time. After we finished the Ultimate Empire Showdown event, I just stopped playing for a while, because I was just all Planetside for the longest time. They've done a lot with that game. They're, it's still in. It's still got some issues, I've got to say. I, I've discovered that apparently flying a plane is a terrible idea now, and you explode a lot. But outside of that, the infantry combat seems like it's been polished up nicely. There's a greater weapon variety. We're not entirely convinced if they buffed our main faction's weapon or if it just feels more powerful because they gave it a better sound. <laughs> but all I can say is I'm getting more kills with it now than I was previously, so... 
I'm pretty sure they buffed it. The the mini chain gun is quite a beast now. They have vastly improved UI, hugely improved. One of the biggest problems that that game had was getting information to you. And they have done a cracking job of fixing that for the most part. The way that they now indicate where you can spawn and make it far, far easier. Basically, you can just click on a point in the map, which has a little green circle on it, and you will be able to spawn there. And also the spawn points are differentiated, so it shows you, you know, what you're spawning on. Are you spawning on a squad beacon? Are you spawning at a base? How safe is it? Well, that's pretty cool. And they put in something called the alert system, which is a bunch of kind of random events that happen every now and again. And everyone's got about an hour to do the best in that event that they can for a certification bonus. And they also changed the way that bases are laid out. They linked bases together and outposts through a lattice system. They actually took a lot of the old outposts out of the game. And they just said, right, you capture by connecting these lattice links together which is much, much better than what it was previously, where you could just kind of run around capturing everything and you could never really truly stop people from doing that. So defending against it was just pointless. It was like trying to swat away a cloud of flies with your hand. It just didn't work. But it's a much better game now. They still need yeah. to deal with the performance problems. Apparently it runs really bad on i7s, which is a pretty bad chip to have your game not run well on. So I'm still getting like 50 frames per second at best in larger battles, 30 at worst, which is not ideal. But it's a much better game now, and they continue improving it. Apparently the new update is coming live sometime tonight. So they're going to be introducing the Lattice to Ezemir and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, that's been good. We're getting the outfit back together. We had a couple of squads rolling last night. It was fun times. What are you drinking? This? Um, yeah. I, it's water. Just water with Leo. Mio, yeah. I, I started buying those, and they're just the handiest things ever. What is that? Mio, liquid water enhancer. Soda. It's If you're in the UK, you probably know it as squash. Here in the US, they vastly concentrated to the point where if you tried to drink this on its own, you'd probably die. <laughs> but it is, uh. it's a highly concentrated flavor shot, basically. And you can kind of put it in pretty much any water. I take it to restaurants with me now because I look through their list like, so what do you got? Well, we got soda, 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 more soda, or water. Like, well, Beer. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> go with the half. Well, most of the places around here, no, they don't. But, you know, I'll get, I'll just get water these days because I'm just sick of drinking high fructose corn syrup. It gives me headaches. It's, I think it's yeah. a man, TB. Uh, yeah, so this is great. Like, I did just a little squirt of this in pretty much any water and no calories, some vitamins in it, probably not too many. Uh, you know, it just tastes better. So, yes, I gotcha. did that. It's good. Yeah, I was curious whether or not there was anything to it or if it really was just flavor. Not, yeah, no yeah. judgment either way. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just drinking vast quantities of Kool-Aid. You know. Oh, okay, cool. Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to say that I would say I have anything against Kool-Aid. I certainly mm -hmm. don't, but I think it, it, putting that much sugar into your drinks is probably a bad idea. If you want sugar, you can eat donuts for breakfast like Dodger did. Yeah, mm -hmm. or you can put four packets of sugar in your coffee like I do sometimes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man. Um, other games <laughs> I've been playing, I played a bit of Mercenary Kings. That is pretty good. It's by a company called Tribute. They made Wizorb, which... Was right. All right, but more importantly, oh. the company was formed of a lot of the people that were responsible for Scott Pilgrim, the video game, and it has a very similar art style as a direct result. It has some great chip tunes behind it, excellent music. They just haven't got enough of it yet. Like the first ten levels has the same soundtrack. Like I like this the first twenty times I heard it, but this is starting to get a little bit repetitive now. It's yeah. it basically is a Metal Slug crossed with Monster Hunter. It's very much a crafting based take on Metal Slug. It has a similar kind of combat. It has reasonably expansive levels with a good amount of exploration involved in it. And it's about collecting materials to build upgrades. One of the barrels I believe you can get for your guns is a cat. So just want to point that out. The, the guns went a little bit silly. Yeah. As, as soon as I noticed that there were that a toilet was a gun and a trombone was a gun and you could customize the gun with various different parts. I believe I'm, start, I'm using a trombone as my barrel now which is kind of like a glorified shotgun of sorts. It gets very silly very quickly, let's just put it that way. The only thing I think I've got a problem with that game is that since it's about gathering materials, it has the same problem that Monster Hunter has in that 
the missions individually are often fairly repetitive and you also have to replay the same level multiple times to get the, all the materials and they host different missions on the same level set it's not just the same tile set it's literally the same level with the same enemies in the same place so that can get a little bit frustrating after a while but for the most part it's pretty solid yeah mm. so that that's a thing Mm -hmm. Yep, Shadowrun, which, again, I really want to talk about Shadowrun. I'm not allowed to talk about Shadowrun. <laughs> it gives me so damn much. Hold but, it back. Yep, and I've been playing a little bit of SMT4 on the 3DS. A bit of Shen Megumi... Meg, I don't even know how you pronounce it. Shen, Shen Megumi Tensei? Shen Megumi Tensei, yes. Oh, Shen Megumi Tensei. Oh, what yep, you nailed it. You nailed it, got yeah, it. That's exactly it. <laughs> Which started off as kind of a fairly standard JRPG until I noticed the element of, oh, you get to negotiate with demons and they often want very silly things. I, that one of, I, I approached this demon which looked like a gerbil and I spoke to the mm -hmm. gerbil. It's like, I really need to go to the toilet. And then it gives you three options. I will go to the toilet for you. <laughs> it's one of them. I'm like, what? Uh, and then, and then there's uh, just hold it and then you can go right here. And depending on your answers, you you have to negotiate with these damn things to get them onto your party. And trying to understand demon logic, that that generally doesn't go well. That I I had there's this senile old demon, which is basically an old man combined with a vulture of some sort, and he thought that I was out to steal all of the inheritance money because I said I respected my elders, and it's like you're just trying to trick me into giving me you the inheritance money, and it's like this is hilarious. <laughs> But that I, sounds I pretty awesome. Yeah, I haven't got very far into it yet. It's it definitely throws some nasty stuff at you that you might not be prepared for, and you should be grinding in that game. What game is this? Sh 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 Shigumi Tensei Four. What is it? Shigumi. Shigumi. S H I N space M E G A M I space. T E N S E I enter. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you said. <laughs> is this the one with the? Is this the 3DS game? Yes. Who be who me? Okay. Yeah. SMT4. It. Some people connect it very much with Persona. It's really kind of not. I believe in Japan, it's not even called Shen Megami Tensei Persona over there. It's just called Persona. Over here, it's still called SMT Persona 4. Yeah, um, found it. which found it, and but there's, it. there's not really a lot of connection between the two, honestly. There's there's little bits here and there which is like, oh yeah, this is kind of like that. But I think we've got a raised hand. I have an important <laughs> question. Yes. <laughs> How did you answer the "I have to go to the bathroom" question? Uh, I, I told I told him what? just to do it right there, and then he told me that was disgusting and tried to kill me. So. <laughs> Cool, good, perfect. Yeah, yeah. it's it's I was just it curious. Is how you would have expected. I probably yeah. should have said, "I'll go on your behalf." It's just like <laughs> that makes no sense. It's demon like, logic. Oh, good. I happen to be the sort of demon that can give you my bladder. Here you go. <laughs> I'm just like, no, I don't want this. A quest item has been collected. Demon bladder. <laughs> I I don't really know where that game's going yet. I, I'm trying to figure it out. It's it is a very strange game indeed. Uh, it's, I, I think it, just like Persona, it's like you got to play through the first few hours to really get to anything that really constitutes as interesting gameplay. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying my hardest to get to a stage where I'm really interested in it. I'm not there yet, but I have a feeling I'll get there. It's got a lot of weird ideas. Also, it manages to beat... You remember last time where I had that gigantic box for Muramasa? Yes. It ma it's, I, I haven't got it in here, but it manages to beat that. The the limited edition, which is basically the first print of it, is gigantic. It comes with a full-on strategy guide and a 200-page manual. I'm like, wow, I'm back in the PC days. This is great. It's, uh, yeah, that's it's so quite intense. the thing. I know what it is. I, I buy handheld games. They have bigger boxes than regular games. This makes no sense to me. Yeah, I don't understand that at no, all. There's, there's no good reason for this. But it's great that it happened. It's, what can I say? So yes, I I, I, I I just bought it. I feel good about this purchase. Nice some tea. Yeah, it's you, you. You'll probably like it. St you know, story-driven JRPG, decent battle system. Nothing particularly imaginative. It goes on. Oh, it's got the push turn system. Whereby blah blah blah. It's like it's that's kind of the same as the Persona Four system. Whereby if you exploit a weakness, you get to attack again. But apparently, you right. get to just like keep attacking if you keep doing that or something like that. It's like this really? is really. It's still yeah. It's still a fair. It's, it's a little OP on your part. Ah uh, well, I no, think those games are rough. Yeah, they, they very much series. are. 
It's a dick. It really is a dick. <laughs> it, oh, that game's a dick. Yeah, I had to grind before I beat Bye the first now. boss. So, you know, it was, oh, this is just like Dragon Quest all over again. I've got to grind to beat the first boss. Ran into the first box, got utterly obliterated. Oh, and the game barely has checkpoints and doesn't remind you to save. So enjoy that. I had to replay the entire dungeon because I just forgot to save, uh, which was fun. But uh, you can actually buy yourself back to life because apparently the, the gatekeeper of the River Styx is just out in it for the money, really. So you can pay him and he'll let you go back there. But if you don't have the money, he'll put it on a tab so you progressively get more and more in debt. It's horrible. It's like a, it's a life lots simulator. Of life that game. Yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot of good lessons, what can I say? And there's class warfare and this weird gauntlet that has... It's like, I am a sprite. Here are the apps that I have as a sprite. Like, what? You're, come on, just say you're a computer or don't, you know? Sprite can do that. Apparently. Apparently they can. There's an app for that on Sprite. There is, in fact, an app for that. Yes. There, there is an app for talking to demons. There is an app for convincing demons to give you items when they join you. There is yeah, all sorts of different things. It's interesting, to say the least. 3DS has quite the lineup now, I've got to say. Yeah. Speaking of Atlas RPGs on 3DS, did you try Aturian Odyssey? I tried the first one a long time ago on the original DS. So did I, and it was miserable, and I really wanted yep. to like it. Yep. Four is actually playable. Four is actually good. Oh, good. It's all the things you wanted in that series without, like, the map making being oh. just mind-bogglingly tedious, right? Like, they made <laughs> yep. it usable finally, and it's glorious. Cool. I'm really glad to hear that, actually. I'd, if I had time for all these RPGs, I'd just be buying them all. As it stands, I've got a lot of them just kind of sitting in the stack. I have not finished Fire Emblem yet. I have not finished yep. Project X Zone, and I'm nowhere even started on SMT. I, I am, do not have time for this. And then I've got Mirror Master on the Vita. And, like, I don't know what to do. And apparently there's some very strange level 5 game that just came out. Like, I think it's called, like, Attack of the something Monsters. Friday Monst... Yeah, Attack of the Friday Monsters. Which subtitles I'm in love for some reason. <laughs> it It's some apparent life simulator game, except they're our kaiju. That sounds about right for level 5. Yeah. It's one of those really <laughs> that weird That does not surprise games. me at all. Yeah. Uh, Where, what? Hold on. What is this game called? <laughs> it is called Attack of the Friday Monsters, subtitled I'm in Love. It's really wow. weird. This looks amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Level 5. For some reason, for the last couple of years, Level 5 has been doing nothing but making really weird 3DS downloadable games. And it's actually great that they keep doing this, <laughs> because no one else is. Yeah, it's. I believe they renamed it in the West to a Tokyo Tale, because. Uh, yeah. Crimson Shroud was them too, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it is cool. attack. Yeah, attack. Attack of the Friday Monsters, a Tokyo Tale. There we go. That's that's what you, that's what it is in the West. It's it's got card mechanics in it and life sim elements and kaiju. Right. How do you go wrong? Like I'm already sold. I don't really know. I don't think you can go wrong with that. So. I've got a nine-hour flight this weekend. I know exactly what I'm doing. Sweet. There you go. Playing that. Yeah. This game looks amazing. So it's downloadable on 3DS? Yes, yeah, so it's downloadable title. I think it's like $10, maybe even less than that. It's... Instant purchase. Yeah. Buy it. As I say, they, they have just gone down to making some really strange stuff these days, including, as you said, Crimson Shroud, which they they did... No, they didn't do Bugs vs. Tanks, I don't think. They did do <laughs> Leighton Brothers Mystery Room. Mm -hmm. And they did Starship Damory as well, didn't they? Yeah. That... It's weird. They do Nina Cooney, and then it's like, you know what's gonna be a really good idea? We're, we're gonna... We're gonna make, like, five weird downloadable games for the 3DS. What was your last yes. game? This gigantic epic JRPG? What, what, what is this? A life sim with kaiju and card mechanics. I'll go, all right, then. All right. Oh, cool, good. Yeah. Sounds delicious. I... Uh, it's... Mm, yeah, I, I don't know. All right, I think it's probably about time we take a break, folks. When we come back, we'll talk about the news this week and cover upcoming releases. You are watching the Co-Optional Podcast, Change is Bad, I Hate Change. We'll be right back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the game... Uh, uh, the gaming podcast by the name of the Co-Optional Podcast. <laughs> it almost happened, didn't it? Yep, you were almost the first one to make almost, the mistake. Almost, almost, <laughs> yeah. That was close. That was close. We're okay, guys, don't worry. 
Man, it's it's so strange to rebrand after so freaking long and have it ingrained into your mind. How many yeah. of these have we done? Oh, 70 something, I believe. Yeah. What about 72, 73 maybe? Man. Quite a few. Like quite a few of those. Yeah. Our 100 episode spectacular needs to be amazing. I'm not sure how we plan on doing that one, honestly. Oh, actually, uh, we're, not, we're not at 70 at all, by the looks of it. We're more at, like, 64, I think. Oh, yeah, oh 60, okay. Yeah. Right. But 63, 64. We would have been at 65 if Dodger wasn't a horrible slacker. Wow! Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> like... <laughs> like, oh, you were, you were really, like, impressed. Wow, I am! Oh, it's God, I, I ruined am. everything! So are we starting the number over with the new name, or are we just continuing the number? This I hadn't considered. I have no idea. I don't know. That's not my job. That's that's Polaris' job. That it's there. They sort no, that out. They can that figure is, it it's out. It's the will of the people. It's the people. They decide. No, don't. The people are dumb. Seriously. I learned that from playing Shoe in Dynasty Warriors <sighs> Eight. I learned don't <laughs> trust the people when we asked them what we should call the podcast. The, the, the... <laughs> Baby podcast. <sighs> Gaming news, let's talk a little bit about that, shall we? Sounds like yeah. a plan. First piece of important news, Payday Beta does not have FOV slider. <laughs> it's true, it doesn't. They haven't put a bloody <laughs> FOV slider in I it. I won't... I'm, not, I'm not saying that I think that you're lying. I just love that that's the first piece of news. You're like, FOV sliders, guys. FOV Are sliders. Are you with me, no. Are you no. with me right now? What can I say? I like to I like to panda, but yeah, it's unfortunately it's 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 quite silly. All right, well that yeah, obviously we will not be talking about that, but that's getting a one out of ten until they fix that. God damn it! It's a PC uh, game. But that was, that was fun it. when we played it at E3. I'm it told was. that it is quite the thing. I mean, it looks. I have a mask. In the background. Yeah. the The idea behind the game is incredible. It, the The first one sounded good for what it was. And it was actually pretty fun to play. Time, right? It was all right. I, I, yeah. who, who played it? Was it Crendor that played a lot of it? You played a lot, Jesse, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. And it was pretty good. Time. Like, the first payday it's, was it's, actually not too bad. Yeah, and they don't dick around with the difficulty. Like, it's no. some of those missions are, if you keep screwing up, eventually it becomes impossible. Because this, the towns you apparently go to rob from have unlimited numbers of police who are just willing yeah. to come at you until they die. <laughs> and so... It's the worst. Yeah. A payday 2 apparently has something called Crime Net, which kind of generates missions for you, you. And it essentially supposedly has an infinite number of missions and way better progression and all sorts of things like that. It, I'm looking forward to playing it when they put the FOV slider in it. Yeah. Okay. And then we can all design our own masks and go on adventures oh, together. Oh, yes. That's, that's the best part is you can make your own mask in this one. Yep. And so you can take masks and change the colors and... Oh, that guy was like, hurry up, you've got to play with your friends. And I was like, dude, I'm making a mask oh over here. Yeah, I kept trying to, because like I, I started off with the cat mask, of course, and I kept trying to like make it bright orange, but it just wouldn't happen. And he was like, are you ready? Are you good? Are you ready? Are you done? Are you ready to go? And I was like, yeah, yep, I'm ready. <laughs> I don't feel so ready. I so stressed out because I just wanted was that bright orange cat mask so bad. I'm so the sorry. mission we did, the mission we did was like you have to be very sneaky and get through these cameras. And I was just like, pop, 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 pop. We're good. Let's do this. And the guy was like, you're going to lose. We kicked the shit out of that we thing. We beat that. <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. Please. Yeah. I'm the guy. I'm the guy who takes. There's no hostages when I go in. <laughs> we everyone's dead, and we get in, we get out. That's how that works. Cops didn't, didn't have time. <laughs> Cops didn't have time to mess with us. I think it's it's going to be very interesting when we invariably play that for the let's drop an announcement. Let's drop an announcement. I just thought I'd kind of raise the tension a little bit. <laughs> it's like, there we go. There, there will we are we are going to be doing a show of some sort on Polaris that will be called Co-optional Plays, which is going to be three of us doing games whereby co-op can allow us to. Either wittingly or unwittingly sabotage each other. Just hate each other so yes, much. Yes, and it will probably start with Monaco. That's all I'm saying. No, come on, TV! Mm. Monaco! Start in the disaster piece that we mean to go on with. Oh. 
Yeah. I guess it's a good way to set the tone. Yes. <laughs> there will be one, only one episode of this. We'll hate each other so much oh afterwards. Oh, my God. It'll be won't. me just like, all right, sneaky, sneaky. Is it Mario Party? Sorry, Is that the first episode? <laughs> That's all I would do. Yes, that that will be a thing, and it's coming to the Polaris Network. We w there will be a number of different titles involved in it. I'm not saying Magicka will be involved in it, but Magicka will probably be involved in it. So. Yeah, man. Yes. Wizard Indeed. Battle Royale. Well, speaking of Wizard Battle Royale, actually, there's been some footage coming out of Wizard Wars for Magicka, yeah. which is looking very interesting indeed. I like the fact that they said, yeah, we're going to make a Dota-like game, but we're going to keep all of the nonsense chaos from Magicka, and we're just going to kind of let it solve itself. And it's like, this has no chance of being competitive. Thank God. The yeah, first, like, Dota-looking game gonna be fun. <laughs> that from the outset says, we have no aspirations of being an eSport of any description. Thank God. Now you can be fun. <laughs> I want them to become an eSport. No. Yeah, I want that to happen. And I want it to be like, oh, he just shot his own teammate in the head. That's 10 points, Phil. It, I want that so badly. <laughs> it would be the first comedy eSport, actually, where the, m what would most likely happen is that the team would sabotage itself more so than anything else. Look, I, Jesse, you can be the very first eSports commentator for Wizard Wars. I'd rather it be TV, and he'd be very serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that serious when I do my commentary, you know that. Just very serious, and then offended. Just offended <laughs> by, like... They are wasting the people's time. <laughs> <laughs> as well as my co-commentators okay. usually. There's there's been times when I've had to commentate a StarCraft match between a like Grand Master League player and a Silver League player because it's just the very early stages of an open tournament. And my co-caster is just like, this is horrible. And just tearing his hair out at how stupid it is. But I, the, the reason I love Magicka is because it is one of the only games to embrace the notion of screwing up in yes. the most hilarious, explosive yeah. ways. It, it deliberately puts stuff in that game where you can mess up horribly. The fact that when you try and cast lightning spells while wet, it electrocutes you. Most games wouldn't even do that because they say, well, people will find it frustrating. Or, oh, it's too easy to kill your friends and teammates in this game. No, Magicka embraces that idea. That's what makes it oh, fun. Oh, yeah. That's what makes it hilarious, because you're literally constantly making mistakes. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just James, so accepting of it. Have you played Magicka, James? Of course. I'm I'm Thought a huge so. Paradox fan. Like, everything they release, even if it's terrible, I'll go play it. And half the time it is terrible, but, you know. <laughs> half the time it is terrible. That pirate game that they released. Oh, oh Pirates of the Black Cove, was that? That was it. That was so oh. bad. Yeah. Oh, I played that. It was horrible. But they're willing to try, right? Like, they're willing yeah. to experiment with things. You're right. Like Magicka, right? Like, nobody else released Magicka. I remember talking down. I was sitting and talking to some of the designers um, after Magicka initially released, and they told me about the first, ex maybe it was the second expansion, uh, the Vietnam expansion. Yes. And they tell me about it. One. I'm cracking up, and I'm like, that's a hilarious joke, guys. And they're like, no, no, that's really what we're going to do. I'm like, Yeah, I right? remember when they released the trailer for that. I'm like, it, is he kidding? That was actually like the Plants vs. Zombies thing and they're like oh they're actually doing that oh all right yeah the garden warfare the for zombies fps <gasps> i can't wait for garden warfare oh, i was like this is a really <laughs> clever parody they put i was watching it, i'm like wow oh. they put so much effort into this parody trailer and then i eventually realized oh it's, it's real. real oh no yeah <laughs> no it's gonna be Brilliant. Horrible is most it's likely. Best game. Oh. Brilliant. Brilliant. That entire presentation at E3 was so quotable. You could take almost anything out of context in that presentation, it would have sounded ridiculous. Yeah. Here's a corn that strike. Is true. We call this Bonk Choi. Like, right, okay, alright. This, this is very silly. I'm trying not to go on a rant about studios that EA buys. <laughs> Please do. We bring you onto this show for that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, more than no, it just it makes me it makes me so sad, right? Because like I've I mean I've said it before. There are tons of EA games I love, and in the '90s they released a bunch of incredible stuff, right? But whether it be 
uh, Origin, not the not the service, right? But like the Ultima series, Killed It Dead, right? Yeah. Um, the guys who were making um, Saboteur who had some great games. Pandemic, I yeah. Mean, right, Pandemic's Saboteur. Done. What a swan song that game was. Aside from the fact it didn't run on AMD cards, like it was actually incredible. It was a really great and game. I got to see earlier builds before they were bought, and like, uh, it was better. Way better, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man. like it was better written. Let's put it that way. Ah, okay. the, the writing was a lot more. They went into a lot more of the issues of that time period, um, ah. and it was it was a powerful thing. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I mean, PopCap. Everyone I know has left PopCap. Like they're like four blocks from me, right? Yeah. And what makes me really sad is like uh, I don't I don't know, but. I haven't seen anything from Fifth and Battery, right? Like Fifth and Battery was amazing. Fifth and Battery was exactly what we need to do in the AAA industry. Uh, for any of you guys who don't know, Fifth and Battery was PopCap's sub-label where they were just like, hey, let's let our engineers and anybody who wants to go nuts, create a prototype of some crazy thing, and we're just going to launch it under this Fifth and Battery label. And if it does awesome, we'll make a PopCap game of it later. And, I yeah. mean, that's how you don't spend $20, $30 million on an experimental idea and still get to experiment, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, uh, uh, Command and Conquer, uh, let's talk Bioware, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Don't even get like, me started. Any, and so I, I really, really want to see PopCap survive this acquisition and be the PopCap of yore. Because, right, for casual games, they made incredible casual games. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Like, it, uh, no other company I would have played that many casual games from. It's just like, why is Peggle fun? I can't immediately identify the reasons, but I'm going to play the damn thing anyway. Right, Pachinko with unicorns and rainbows? Awesome. Um, but I have, I mean, Garden Warfare, right? Especially the fact that it's farmed out. Uh, wow, pun not intended. Um, <laughs> the, nice, nice. The fact that uh, it was not actually built at PopCap, but now they're... Uh, exploiting globally PopCap franchises like has me hugely worried and you would think that EA serving as an acquisition machine would uh, have figured this out by now right because I mean they've bought tons and tons and tons of run them all into the bloody ground every single one and you know something you know what I think Activision's got it right right like I think that EA is running First around. First time I've ever heard anyone say that one. So that's <laughs> right. how bad it's got that someone's willing to say that. And so get this, right? This is how I see it. Um, EA is desperately trying to figure out what's next, right? Because they're clearly not competitive at this point. The number of quarters, after quarter after quarter of losses that they've reported is unbelievable. The amount of money they just hemorrhaged is oh, yeah. remarkable, right? Um, and of course not, right? Like they were subscription in a free to play world. They're always a little bit behind the ball because that ship turns slowly. Yes. It um, did. Yeah. so they're, they are desperately, I mean, I think of them as baby Huey, right? Like walking around, sitting down on stuff and crushing it, um, by accident because they're trying to look for what's, uh, what's going to keep them viable. And I think Activision is actually correct what they're doing right now if if in my opinion is activision is exploiting on an annual basis they're, they're running their franchises into the ground and piling up money right and they're just going to wait until somebody gets it right and somebody figures out how to do next gen and triple a in some way that's uh actually cost efficient that's actually viable and then they're just going to do it and add a whole new layer of polish and blow everybody out of the water right because they can throw a billion dollars at it and so they're totally happy releasing nothing but Skylanders and Call of Duty and Warcraft, right? Yeah. And they're happy killing those franchises too. Doesn't and, matter to them. And to be fair, you know, if we could talk about like Skylanders and as much as we see it as a franchise now, that was a gigantic risk for them going into well, that. That was that was yeah. some interesting new stuff going into well, it. Well, and I think that one's I mean, I, I actually think Skylanders is a big deal. I think that this idea of RFID enabled um uh, toys, like real world oh, physical pieces interacting. If I was a kid, when that came out, I would be all over that. Right. And it's only going to get better, right? Like sooner or later, we're going to have our Warhammer 40k or whatever that all communicates with each other. Oh, Jesus. That does calculations off to the side. Like there's all sorts of design possibilities that open up given the fact that RFID chips are now like less than two cents. Um, and I think 
I mean, we see Disney jumping on that right now. Yes, right? Infinite. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I see that as as huge potential. But Activision, I see as waiting, seeing these opportunities, and just throwing the money to actually make them happen. Um, but other than that, just stockpiling cash for the transition we're going through. And I think EA is desperately trying to adjust that transition, but can't move fast enough because it's too big. And I'm just worried. I hope. I hope that PopCap just doesn't get crushed under that ship. But. To me, they I'm, would hardly be the first that did, unfortunately. They would be the I, first that didn't if they, uh, yeah. they survived. Yeah, That's Jesse. very true. I have to disagree. I think EA is doing a fabulous job, and I'm convinced that they know what's best for us and are the best people <laughs> that ever existed. And if they mess with me, I swear to God, I'll find you, EA. I'll find and you. And I mean, from my side, right, like, I actually would like, because there are some good games, right, and, like, I would like to see EA succeed because, from my perspective, as a developer, like if EA went under, do you know how many jobs that is? That's do you know a lot of jobs. How terrible that is. Yeah. And so I, I'm actually rooting for EA, but they got, they, they got to make a change from this acquire and then implement old EA practices in a studio that's doing new things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't think there's really a question about that. Isn't is that? I mean, it's it seems like there's so much focus group driven stuff going on with ea at this stage it's like how can we make something that will appeal to x I'm like well how about if you if you make a good game it will acquire a demographic of its own organically because that's how media works no we, we think we want to we want to make something that appeals to x like could, could you just not do that it bothers me so very much and it just means that there's no risk taking whatsoever from them and they're just gradually pumping out franchise after franchise that seem to be packaged products designed for a very specific thing for a very specific group of people and they're willing to sacrifice the integrity of whatever that franchise was in order to try and get large uh, just get a larger fan base behind it they would hardly be the only company to do that but there are they, they are easily one of the biggest i feel I agree, but riddle me this: What is the target demographic of uh, your <laughs> FPS <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies? I don't think it has one. I mean, it's it's nonsense. It is. Com- it, I don't so, get what they're shooting for there. But do you think that that's Team their- Fortress? No, they're shooting for the Team Fortress Two crowd. The, I mean, well, that's, they, that's no. What actually, that is. actually, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly who they're shooting for. Actually, they're they're shooting for the four-player co-op horde mode based crowd that is built around stuff like call of duty zombies and uh, things like sniper elite nazi zombies and of course left for dead and all sorts of so, things like that i think it's actually part of a in my opinion misguided but larger ea strategic goal uh, that they started with mass effect 3 i think they okay. want to graduate casual or more casual players players who are not fps players into the fps market because they see call of duty owns currently 100 percent of the fps competitive market pretty much Uh, i mean battlefield has a small slice right but they want to they want to move more new bodies into that market and so i think that with uh mass effect 3 they were using that as a way to get rpg players to start entering that field in a very approachable way right like team-based it's not competitive yeah right but you might start being willing to play online FPSs now. And I think, I think in some weird way, they think they're going to start migrating some of your Plants vs. Zombies fans into the competitive FPS space. So they oh my have god, I of... want... You want I that? want that so badly. Oh, are you oh. kidding me? I want to hear, because I'm used to, I'm, now I'm used to hearing 12-year-olds swear at me. Right, now right. I want to hear like... 54 year old women <laughs> I will eat your soul like <gasps> yes! I need that I need that I, I feel like that's kind of I mean I feel like James and Jesse are kind of saying the same thing though because for a lot of people TF2 is like this silly fun shooter game that mm-hmm. winds up being their gateway drug into other shooters so this Plants vs. Zombie Garden Warfare might be like the gateway drug into oh I wonder if there are other games like this Maybe. oh there's like TF2 kind of, and then uh, I, other things. I but I don't, think, I don't is... think many people are going to get that far. 
Mm. Right. Maybe. I wonder how so, much of a gateway drug TF2 really is, though. Like, I, I don't see a lot of people playing TF2, and it's like, better go play some Call of Duty now. It's like, oh, this is a team-based, class-based multiplayer shooter, and it's no, not like but it. in the in the same way that it encourages you to try something, it's like when people want to try some sort of a MOBA, and so they play League of Legends League, because yeah. it's friendly-ish in terms of its interface. It's true. It's true. It's, true. it's easier, and it looks more appealing when you open up the interface. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I, I will give you that. Friendly it is not, but... Yeah. I'll so then, So then people who get really good at that at League of Legends wind up being like, ah, oh, maybe I'll try Dota. And then if you're me, you're like, oh, God, nope, 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 mm. nope. And then you leave. But I mean, it did encourage me to attempt it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I think you know, make, I think for for very open-minded people that will try something <laughs> like League, that that they would be willing to try other alternatives. But I honestly feel like the vast majority of people that get into League have no reason to leave because, frankly, as much right. as we can bash on League for being an easier game than Dota, it's not easy enough for the vast majority of people to give a damn. Like. Right. I, the, the people that I see bragging on Reddit about, I'm a Dota player because League's a stupid casual game. It's like, these are the kind of guys that couldn't get to gold <laughs> on ladder in League anyway, yeah? They're nowhere near competitive, they never will be. So the skill ceiling for them is so far out of sight that there's a cloud layer in between them and that damn skill layer. They're just, they're never going to reach that ceiling. They, they brag about it for the sake of it. And when it comes to League, I feel that people that play League are committed to that because they've spent a lot of time unlocking characters for an account. Like, they perceive value in that account, and they don't well, want to abandon it. Yeah, but if if you like James games... James is trying to talk as desperately as he can. It's like, Dodger, shut up! No, Look, no, 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 no. I haven't talked nearly as much! Come oh, on! All right, okay, yeah. he's good, all right. All I wanted to I, say... Shut what, up, Jesse. Jesse? <laughs> shut up! <laughs> Before you continue, I'd just like to point out that you Wait guys... Wait a minute, good guys. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm done. <laughs> Co-optional indeed. Oh, look, it's Dodge's done skill with ceiling. All of you. Done with all of I you. Just, I just would like to point out that we spent, a, by we, I mean you guys, spent a good 10 minutes talking about uh, Plants vs. Not Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> Garden Warfare. Like it was marijuana. <laughs> and I just would like to point that out, because I don't... Kids. As of cookies? <laughs> drugs are bad stay off of them <laughs> well, however I, if you're oh, gonna have cookies i would recommend paniki from czechoslovakia <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> oh did you did you get those in a, yes I, look yes oh, no 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 no, no i, no, I want to let james actually talk so we can stay on topic fuck this we're gonna have a good show uh, get on with it james uh, oh. <laughs> i want to see the new iteration of the show sponsored by paniki that's what i really hope yes <laughs> We are open to uh, check I, sponsors. Brand, we really are. I just want to say, because it relates to Panicky, the greatest book <laughs> ever was. Uh, if you are out there and you're like, hey, I really want to send TB and Dodger and Jesse and, and James uh, free stuff to look at, and you're a game company and you want us to actually give it consideration, do what Turtle Strike did mm -hmm. and send us a box of chocolates and delicious things. <laughs> it was full I was like, of check why stuff. I'm in. Yeah, it, we, we got a giant box from... Uh, they're, they're launching a game called Turtle Strike on Android, which is supposedly a competitive title. And they sent us a box of Czechoslovakian snacks. And I was like, I don't know what this is. And I bit into it, it's like, this is banana chocolate. This is very strange here, but I'm surprisingly yeah, liking it. But, yes. Banana chocolate isn't strange. It's a very common it, team of That's what players. you need to do. I'm just saying. I'm just saying not not because I'm, gonna sh I'm a shill and will say your game's great, but Turtle Strike... Maybe the best game of our generation. <laughs> Ryan out loud. All right, let's 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 get this back on topic. So, Dodger, Sorry. before I rudely interrupted you, and then I James interrupted Jesse, and Jesse, I, I, I'm assuming this is all Jesse's fault. Dodger, what was your point? All I, I was going to say is that if you love games, regardless of if you've put a lot of time into one game, you will be interested in seeing what another one is like. So, actually, that's <laughs> perfect, because my response to that was, uh, I agree, but... I think that one of the things that keeps people in one specific MOBA is the fact that the information ceiling is so high. Like learning all those characters, yes. learning all those. Yes. And so it's not only sunk costs in terms of dollars and time, but also just like brain space, right? Like yeah. I don't yeah. want to have to go learn all that again for a new MOBA. Um, and so I think that MOBAs are slightly different than talking about 
casual FPS migration, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Because um, an AK is an AK in whatever game you go into, right? At the end of the day, it's going to fire the same way for the most part. But going into, if I play League for a thousand hours, which I've played more of that, I think, than anything else. And then I go to Dota. That doesn't make me good at Dota. In fact, it probably right. makes me right. worse because I've got a lot of bad habits because going Because you on. have like presumptions, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have certain presumptions and I play in certain ways and even muscle memory has <laughs> developed. You know, the way that last hits work in that game. Oh, suddenly denies are a factor. Oh, suddenly I have a 50% mischance over hills. Oh, suddenly there are runes and this guy's going to stomp me with double damage who just came out of nowhere with it. There's so much more. But yeah, I mean, I, I think James is right there. I think, you know, maybe Dota style games are a, a bad example, but they're one of the kind of only ones that are because of that. It's that shooters probably. Yeah, I think so. Well, I think actually it's this this problem. And I mean, I think the TF market, they already tried to address with Battlefield, Battlefield Heroes. Battlefield Heroes, yes. Yeah. Um, but I think it's the same well. flaw back when free to play and especially like facebook games and casual games are really getting the attention of the triple a industry for the first time i used to hear all this conversation about graduating up the audience how you'd yeah. have all these people who were jewel players all of a sudden starting to play call of duty right that clearly hasn't happened and it makes total sense right because um we see this in some ways with uh any form of retail, right? There is a certain amount up that chain you can get. You can get people who go to McDonald's and buy their cup of coffee in the morning to start going to Starbucks, right? Mm-hmm. And buy that extra sugary drink. That I mean, that's one tier up. But you're not necessarily going to graduate that person to a coffee aficionado, right? To the hardest of the hardcore mm-hmm. of that particular genre. And I'm worried that the same thinking is going on here with the Plants vs. Zombies. Mm-hmm. And I'm worried that if that tanks, it's going to be a huge problem for pop cap internally and in terms of ea relations and that's not something i'd like to see yeah i think that's why though that that, that's why they they want people to play the the harder games like because to me it seems like this is i see the team fortress too i see it as like we are gonna we want the team fortress 2 audience we want them because they're a little more casual and I, I, bet, I really disagree. And the reason I disagree on the subject of TF2 is like TF2 versus like Garden Warfare. If we talk about what Garden Warfare actually is, yeah. Garden Warfare is a four player co op wave based third person shooter, yeah. This is actually a genre. Basically, it's there's an attempt right now within the industry, and there has been for the last couple of years, to turn Horde mode from a bonus mode into a full-on game. A full game. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's been done with various titles, and more often than not, it's done very badly. There are examples of games that do it well. Killing Floor is a great example of a game that does it phenomenally well. One of the best Horde modes I've ever seen. And then there are games like Nazi Zombie Sniper Elite, and God Mode of all bloody things. And recently, R.I.P.D. by exactly the same sodding company, which is a horribly <laughs> boring Horde Mode in a game. And they see it as people love co-op, people love zombie waves, and mild progression systems. So this is a very, very easy genre to create a game within. And to me, all Garden Warfare represents, it may very well be that there is a grander scheme behind it, but maybe we are giving EA a little too much credit. It is possible. I think, I think so. It, it, we might be. I, I don't know. I, I, I actually don't. I do actually believe that EA is trying to dislodge um, Call of Duty from the sole console multiplayer game um, because unfortunately they've spent so much money on fps's and on developing fps engines um and i mean they really really want a part of that billion dollar market that right now activision controls all of pretty much and so uh, we we may be giving them too much credit but to me that's the overarching strategy i see there it'd be lovely if each of these sold well and create a new genre um but I'm not sure that EA isn't thinking of them as a way to move people into some of their other games where they can't dislodge audience from Call yeah. of Duty. Uh, that's that's um, an interesting point because I think the, the fact of the matter is they've tried to take them on head-on before and directly yep. steal that audience whole cloth, and Warfighter is the result of that, Yeah, which was... <sighs> 
a goddamn disaster. So instead of trying to take them on whole cloth, you take on parts of what the Call of Duty experience is, one of which is the Horde mode, yeah? The zombie mode in that game is a very strong selling point to that title, and a lot of people spend a lot of time playing it because it is actually a bit more casual than playing Call of Duty. As casual as COD is in comparison to most FPS, What's even more casual is co a co-op experience, not a competitive experience. You're not going to get yelled at by people much in COD Zombies. <laughs> Speaking of co-op experiences, have any of you guys played War Warframe? Yes, no. it's fucking phenomenal. Like, it, for a free game... If I was game, 14, I would just spend all my days just playing Warframe. Yeah, Space Ninjas. And Dude, chopping wall running? Oh... <laughs> Yeah, Hi hyperspeed wall running, parkour, nonsense, backflips, right. sliding, sliding with guns. Sliding double guns. I love so that. Great. Sliding with a sword where you do the slide and it'll spin around and chop the legs off them as you go past. And you just, there might as well just be an explosion in the background as you casually saunter off after that. Oh, so Warframe. Warframe is, to me, the best recent example of just taking it to 11, right? Like, sometimes yeah. if you just need a junk food game, Warframe is just so good for that. Yeah. The only problem I've got with Warframe is I feel that the, the microtransactions are too expensive and the progression takes too long if you don't buy in. You know? Right. Uh, so I, I mean, there's a lot of things that are tedious about it. Yeah. I, I am just amazed at how well they captured being awesome. Right. They really did, actually. They really did. I think the first video I ever did of that game, I said, you know it would be really great if you could do this and then the next patch, here's wall running. It's like, I just said you should do that. That's so amazing. You were obviously thinking <laughs> about this before I was. You were clearly inside of that, you know. And that, that was the great thing. They obviously know what they want to do with that game. And as a result, they've been able to just go hog wild with it because, it's, as it turns out, it's actually a very popular game right now it's got over a million players it's doing really well in the free to play space and there's not that many co-op focused games that are free to play right that's what's amazing it's a co-op focused fps free to play that's successful yep we just don't see those no we don't have we talked about any of the news topics not at all not <laughs> news. way to go james <laughs> i do it again jesse james about to blast off the speed of light by the looks of it uh... Does that mean that you're our Meowth? Oh my god. No, and Do Do Dodgers Do Lobafet! Do no, no, Done. Dodgers Meowth, come on. No, Dodgers yeah. Lobafet, you're Meowth. Uh. Done. I want to be coughing. Done. Nope. Let me Done. be coughing. Can I, can I be Done. Arbok? Shut it, Wobbuffet! <laughs> wow, I'm fat. That's you. I don't even know what that is. Is that not one of the original 150 first? Because I don't recognize anything outside of that. Lobafet, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't recognize those as real, so I'm now one of those that is guys. a fan art. Enjoy, James. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'll be the woman, though. Eh, screw it, I usually am. I was going to say. <laughs> Nothing unusual there. <laughs> In the fan know. art, I usually am. Pretty much Whatever. every Thursday Absolutely. night, right? Yeah. All right, so we will attempt to talk about news. There's actually a couple of interesting topics that I do want to broach, and then we'll go into a break. So the first one is there's just been a bunch of new games greenlit and I would love to talk just a little bit about some of those, if you don't mind, because one of them is Dive Kick. Yay! All right, all dive right. Dive Kick. I think Dive Kick gets a bad rap. The reason I think it gets a bad rap is because, well, actually, it's mostly self-inflicted from them. It, it started as a joke game, but then became not a joke game, but it's still kind of a joke game. And yet, it actually uh -huh. gets a lot of respect from the fighting game scene as boiling down the essence of a uh, fighting game to its bare essentials. I don't, I don't... <laughs> Having been at Evo and seen the reception it got, I don't know if it's a lot of respect. It's a lot of curiosity. Curiosity. A lot of, yeah. a lot of interest. Like, people are interested in seeing what it's about and playing it and testing. Because it's really one of those, if you get hit, you're dead kind of things. So it's very, it's very quick. And people are, are interested in it because there's a lot of strategy of back and forth before you try to attack. And so I don't know that, that it got a huge reception at Evo, but... I mean, every I guess that's I've the hard it, course of the hardcore, so yeah. I don't know. Every time I've seen it, it, there was actually a really interesting article that just came out, I think, on, on GameSpot, where Gutex, who is very big in the fighting game scene, was talking in depth about it, and a lot of the guys behind the fighting game community have said, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this game that seems to be the essence of what a fighting game is, but yeah. with a lot of the complexity removed and boiled down to pure strategy and pure kind of minute by minute, second by second, reactionary gameplay and a lot of predictive stuff as well. Right. But I don't know well, if I'm I like taking it more seriously than it's taking itself. 
I, well, I so. I'm not sure. I don't know if it matters, right? Because I, what I found really compelling about it was this fact that as a non-hardcore fighting player, right? Like, I'll play some fighting games, but I very rarely uh, end up memorizing all the moves, right? Um, I can still get at that essence of uh, tournament fighting play, right? Like, the things that actually make fighting games really interesting, that make it a chess match rather than button mashing. Yes, exactly is available finally to me, right, as a player, which I thought was just fantastic. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I felt. I mean, I'm decent at fighting games. I'm not amazing at them. And I can I can play on a reasonable level. But I feel that I could give this game to someone that has never seen a fighting game in their life, and they could probably take some rounds off me, and it would be interesting to do. Whereas if I yeah. sit down with a fighting game versus someone that hasn't played a fighting game, they will lose. I mean, that that's the reality of it. Now, I'm not even that good, so I can't imagine how it is for people that are better. And with Dive Kick, it's a great equalizer, mm. honestly. And I love that about it. I really do. That's it's a good way to put it. It's tense as well. It's really tense, especially once it gets down to match point, simply because it, you know that one hit is all it takes. So it becomes a really interesting kind of adrenaline-fueled experience, in my opinion. Also, I beat the creator of it over and over again, and I feel so good about that. What can I say? I entered the Lang Zone. Did you uh, did you play Bushido Blade back in the day? Oh, a long time ago. Only a bit of it here and there. That but was it, so good. That, that, well, that was another example of a game where it could, you know, one one hit kills were possible. Right. Uh, that's what I thought was re really interesting, right? Like that that moment of build up before the fight, right? Um, waiting for your opponent to blink to strike. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, don't li go for it. I am so done. No, there's a uh, in that in, at Evo there was a whole area that was all indie games and, and it was really cool and there were two and for the life of me I feel like a giant ass because I can't remember the name of them but if you ever see them you need to play these uh, the first one is your two little pixel guys so so it's a fighting game but your two little pixel guys with swords Nidhogg. and Snidhog yes uh, oh and, but you keep running at each other is that what yeah yeah Nidhogg Con Nidhogg it's consistently delayed till the end of time now apparently is finally coming out it is terrific because basically yeah. it's like two armies but you're only one guy at a time meeting yeah and then you kill a guy and you keep moving across the screen to like a different area and like another so it's it's a blast and so that was really really fun and then there's another one that is you play as four uh samurai warriors that you can select and you play on this one map and it's all one hit kills so and you have like fireballs and stuff that you can throw but it's for it's you know it's it's free for all and you're trying to kill everybody and if you slash them they like explode on the screen in blood but it's all little tiny pixels and there's some maps like there's one where you're just falling through the trees as you like have to fight each other and you're perpetually falling and you're like it's really creative and then at the end if two people are tied they go into like a samurai showdown with the sun setting in the background they have to run at each other and whoever gets the first hit off wins and the guy like explodes and dies it's the best and i wish i could remember what that was because the completionist and i played it for maybe 45 minutes and we're like we challenge anyone to battle <laughs> i wasn't very good but i had a blast because it was really fun and th it's those kind of games that i'm like that's the easy stuff I like, where you don't need zero skill to play that, but it's fun because you can get off those shots every now and again, and it's a good party game. And I was like, we need more of that. Mm -hmm. I'm down and with the, that. There's a high skill cap too, right? Like there are actually, like as you play the game, you do understand it better and get yes, better at it yeah. and start being able to strategize. Yeah, but yeah, you, the, you can you avoid have, you have the, the muscle memory issues that seem to yeah. plague a lot of people. It's like the idea of fighting games, that, oh, I can't play this because I'd have to memorize all the combos and things like that. And yes, there are plenty of games where if you don't know those things, you're going to be in a crap ton of trouble. But I, I, I love fighting people that are that guy that learned every combo and learned every move, but they have no understanding of the strategy behind it. So like, look at all his, co oh, that doesn't work because you didn't do it at the right time. You weren't thinking, you know, you didn't try and put me in a position where that would have worked out. So I'm going to kick your ass. And that was, that's great. I, and that's, that was, that's that dive was, kicking in a nutshell, you know? And I think that's, you see that, uh, and I'm glad that that dive kick allows you to do that on a really easy level. Cause yeah. you see that watching at Evo, the players who were like, I'm playing this guy, and you think like, oh, well, he just knows how to play that specific character very, very well. And when they start losing, you see them flip a switch where it's like, all right, what's the counter to the person who's kicking my ass right yes. now? And they, and you saw them do that many, many times where they would come yeah. back and win. And it was like, that's the people who know what they're doing. And I'm glad that Dive Kick sort of brings that down to like, you feel 
Like you have that, even though you really, <laughs> yeah, you really, you really don't. Very true. Thank you. Other games on the list: A Hat in Time, which I know a lot of people have been really happy I'm about so seeing. Excited for that game. That's a fun game. Yep. I go what go watch the green light episode on it. It's the best. Yes. <laughs> Bro Force. All is caps, amazing. Yeah. Is I need to try amazing. that. Amazing. I believe that you can try the what free alpha of that, can't you? You played it, Jesse, haven't you? Yes, Bro Force. I, how do I describe it? Bro Force is it, it's it's a game a where you play as action platform game. Perfect. It's a game where <laughs> well you play done. as all all American like action heroes, every single one. If you think one's in there, it probably is. And you run around and blow stuff up and things explode, you kill your friends. And then when you beat the level, it blows up the level, and only one person survives. So it's kind of like just ridiculous, over-the-top, silly well, fun. this sounds like a really good episode of the co-optional play show. <laughs> uh, and it's it's and the best part is you can have like a bunch of people who play it, but you can if someone dies, you can save them and they become another bro. And and I discovered there's a really great. I think people made like a gift set of it, which is really funny. Uh, the guy uh, Blade. Which I, I don't know what his name is, like Bro Aid. I have no I have no clue what they call him in this. Mm, but you play as Blade, delicious. And it, you get you get your sword, right? And so you just can slice through the level. And I was like, I'm gonna slice through this entire level. I went from one point to the end, just murdering everything with my blade. And I was like, that was great. And the next level, I was like, I'll do it again. It was instantly shot in the face. It's <laughs> 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 like, well, that didn't work out too well. And all the heroes have. All the heroes have different sing things. So, like the Commando Schwarzenegger versus the Terminator Schwarzenegger. Are like the Terminator one has a gun that fires so far that you fly backwards. There's, uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, the MacGyver guy you play, like Bro Guyver, whatever his name is. Bro he throws God. bombs <laughs> that take a while to go off, so you end up getting screwed. I mean, it's it's ama it's amazing game. So anyone you can imagine is in there. Oh, there's John McClane and like, uh, oh, oh, and because all the weapons are relate to the uh, movie that they come from. When you play as Will Smith from Men in Black, he has that little <laughs> cricket. So it fires and explodes giant areas of the map and he flies backwards. That it's sounds hilarious. That sounds so great. I want that on the basis of that and only that. It is such a good game. Yeah, it's awesome. hilarious. Yep. Let's see, what else there? Among the Sleep is coming along. I refuse to play that game. It looks way too creepy. Why, you're a baby! Here's the thing, though. Having played it, it is creepy as balls. But with that said, I'm still under the impression, since you're playing a baby, nothing too horrible nothing can happen. Nothing's gonna happen. Yeah. Probably like, not true. <laughs> they're, you think they're gonna murder a baby? You're yes. playing a baby! I, I legitimately think they will probably do something like that or creepier. I know. <gasps> what if the spoiler at the end is you aren't a baby, but you're a man who has a baby fetish and you're dressed up in a diaper? Let's move on, shall we, to... That's it. You nailed it. You I'm just saying, that way they can get away with murdering you. That's the twist. Yep. There, are, there are a few other games on this list that look interesting, such as Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Finally, yes. it makes its way to PC. Casual. No, it doesn't. It, it, is it? It's on green light now. Like they won't even get it on Steam yet. I'm furious about that. Uh, that's like a legit uh, real game, and they're like, no. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. The, the fact that Deadly Premonition had to go through green light is kind of ridiculous. That that makes no sense whatsoever. I have no idea why that happened. That. Well, I mean, we could talk for ages about the green light process. I mean, the, even this yeah. week, Valve said, I mean, we have yeah, it's pretty them. rubbish. <laughs> and we have, yeah, repeatedly talked about this. It's like, yeah, but why on earth did Deadly Premonition of all things have to go through the green light process? I mean, really Did now. it get through? Oh, yeah. It, this is what we're oh. talking about, Jesse. You might oh, have okay. noticed. We had a topic about this <laughs> we introduced 10 minutes ago. Sorry. No, sorry. I, I was under the impression because yesterday, Josh and I filmed more episodes of the green light and it was still listed as not yeah approved, it just so. it just happened at two hours ago that's why so all right all right yeah. that's why i was like mm -hmm. yes so that's good good for but de deadly premonition going through the green light process is the stupidest thing i've heard of in a long time because uh, it's a legit game that has a director's cut and you can get it on every console i yep. don't understand yep whatever <laughs> whatever and, and has this weird cult following behind it and i'm gonna it's i'm gonna great. be entirely frank i have right. not played it i i, I have heard I'm very playing. strange it's things fun. I heard a lot of strange things from Giant Bomb, and it's got this weird cult following surrounding it now. Yeah. It's one of those, I'm telling you, it's like Fahrenheit in that level of like, 
it starts out and you're kind of like, oh, this is creepy. And then you're like, what is happening? That's why I love it. <laughs> it's, it's got that like amazing and terrible. It's got the level of uncanny that Twin Peaks has. Yes. And it steals so much from Twin Peaks. Plus, but, like, coffee, guys. Coffee. Dude, I'm coffee. Saying, coffee. Yeah. It's an inside joke from the game. Coffee. You'd love it, Dodger. <laughs> Drink the coffee, kiddo. Have any of you guys played off? Yeah. Ah, Dodge, yes, yeah. Dodge has done a series on that. So, because that to me is like a French David Lynch remixing Earthbound. And yes. so I just figured I'd get a mention out while. That's we're a fantastic way to put that game. Yeah, we talked about that game. I, I think, have we talked about it while you've been on here, TB? Or was that only when no, Kendra was No, you didn't. It? I noticed you were doing a series on it, and I didn't watch any of it. So I have. <laughs> that's okay. Just saying. But there, there are meat rivers. That's all you need to know. Oh. There's an entire area where there are meat rivers because meat is the first and most important element. TB. <laughs> I don't disagree with that. I'm on board now. There we go. It is, in fact. It's yeah. Off is a very, very interesting game that hmm. gets progressively more twisted. Yeah. yeah, I'm still trying to figure out why Deadly Premonition had to go through Greenlight. It was, it's, it's going through Greenlight under Rising Star. Did Rising Star publish anything on PC? That, because probably not. That, but they're a huge console publisher. Like they so put out saying. so much stuff. It, it yeah, they, they haven't done a thing on PC. This would be the first thing they've released. And Valve, I guess, turned around and said, "You have to go through the Greenlight process." Uh, yeah, great. You know, the fact that I've put out 30 games on various different platforms, including stuff that is actually good, like, you know, Rune Factory, which is legitimately good. <laughs> yeah. They published Muramasa in Europe, which is amazing. Way of the Samurai 3, the only game I know where you can perform Bushido with a leak. I believe there's a yep. fish weapon in that game, too. So, I mean, naturally. Yeah, obviously. It's... They, they're kind of a strange publisher because they publish some really weird stuff like Girls Fashion Shoot for 3DS, and then they publish hey. like hardcore JRPGs and weird stuff. They published Bit Trip on 3DS and Wii. It's like, ugh. They purchased Virtue's Last Reward. Yes, which is awesome. Yeah. Very good game. Yeah, it's a, I, it's, it boggles my mind that they would have to go through Greenlight. That's, that's very strange, but the Greenlight is very strange, so there you go. What else yeah. is coming out? Let's see. Uh, the only other one that I personally know on there, and the rest of you, if you see something else on there that you want to point out, feel free. Uh, the only other one that I know is Recoil, which is a. I don't think about that game. It's a it's a first person shooter, uh, multiplayer. It's fairly Counter Strike esque. It's got a lot of interesting older school elements and they are the kind of people that like to really really listen to their people you know the kind of people be playing the beta and things like that they're they're actually a really cool dev that has a massive background in playing and enjoying old school shooters and they they just wanted to make a game with legit weapons that wasn't like call of duty and they said we want to make something that's got full modding support full customizable dedicated servers and it's designed for esports and all you know it's just a core shooter and it's actually pretty good what i played of it anyway i played it at pax last year and the version then was really solid like i enjoyed what i played of it so that's been like, like pax is like um, a little over a month away it's almost here five weeks no. away. I just, I just realized i'm so excited it's <laughs> four, so days excited. Long. four days long four, four days it. oh look oh. You've done Gamescom, though, right? Yeah, but I I have to speak a lot more at PAX. I think I have, like, six talks. Last year, I had, like, eight. And wow. Yeah. We do one, and that's it. We're like, well, you do. I, I run around for 12 hours a day doing interviews and coverage and dev commentary for, like... Yeah, that's silly, TB. That sounds like a lot of work, buddy. That sounds <laughs> Who like... Who knows? I might even have an Artemis game I have to run at this one. Yeah! yeah. If only, if only we could be involved in that in some way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll talk to people, see what I can do. Well, well yes. We're, we're not going to promise anything, guys, because you know 90% no, of what right. gets said on Actually, the show never happens. But, right. Uh, oh, you um, know what's going to happen? We're going to get emails until November. Like, what happened to that thing you talked about that one time? Yeah. It's great because on our panel, I'm just going to tell them that you guys blew it. Like, that yeah, we were all going to do it. Right, totally. I'm blaming Jesse specifically. 
Yeah, that oh, makes sense. Yeah. Especially that's, since he expected. disconnected while we were talking about well, it. Well, on our panel, we'll really blame you person. for screwing it up, and the arms race this will begin. <laughs> Can we have rap enemies? Oh, this would be great. Yeah. I'm gonna, I, we only might... must settle this in a rap battle. Yeah. Our, oh, our panel God. actually might be so late that uh, there might not be another panel after it. You know what that means? Really? Means. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're at like at mm -hmm. nine or ten. I'm not sure if that's really? the last panel in that one. Late night panel! Late night panel! If it is, I'm staying in there for hours. <laughs> do a full three hour show. It'll be amazing. Oh, late night Ours panels go. Be... Yeah. Late night panels, we always wings? go to like four hours. They don't I want to serve chicken wings. We got 58 minutes that last time. Yeah. And we filled the room out. It was. Order delivery at the start of your panel, it works out great. Uh, oh my god, that sounds amazing. I want this. Oh yeah. Primarily because I am hungry right now. But <laughs> I bet that I'll be hungry at that panel that we do. We need to find that place so. that's near the convention center called Little Woody's. And it's a it, the mascot is a little little wood uh -huh. man. And I want them to deliver food. Because <laughs> I think it'd be great. Little Woody's, call me. <laughs> let's not, let's not go to the place that I went. Man. You remember last year, Jesse, the place that we went to where they couldn't even get basically get me a sandwich out on time before I had to go uh, back. To I remember that place very well because two you, random girls. Yeah, you kept getting hit on. It, was... it made me feel good. And then I would look over at TV like, well, it, <laughs> it was wonderful. I was like, that was awkward, wasn't it? For you. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Jesse gets a lot of attention. Uh. <laughs> All right, do we want to take a break now, or do we want to talk about the news that just came out that Microsoft has said, yeah, you can self-publish? Uh, or do we want to take cool a break before either. we do that? Should we take a break before we do that? Yeah, let's take a break. Look, right. yes. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Choices. We'll talk yeah. about that news, because I think that's pretty important. That just came out in the last couple of hours, so I want to talk about the self-publishing for Indies thing on Xbox One. And then we'll run through releases, we'll have a look at some trailers, and we will talk about James's new project. You are watching the Co-Optional Podcast. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Game Station. Bollocks. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Yeah, it happened. It finally happened. Ah, oh, damn. This is going to take a... This is going to be a habit. This is a difficult thing to break. What can I say? It's fair. We have no reason to say Well, it. I mean, this is like, still a game station. This is a station upon which we discuss games. But upon this station, there is a show called the Co-Optional Podcast, and that is what you are currently watching. Welcome back. Simple it's like that. the O's are headphones, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a D. No. The D is a microphone. It looks oh like God. a penis. No. It's about to enter the headphones. I was going to say, can, if, look, if it looks like section. that, then you need to go see a specialist, quite frankly. <laughs> That's not common. By any stretch of the imagination. Alright. I want to talk about this whole self-publishing thing. Because this has been... I feel one of the bigger deals we got in the Xbox One that a lot of people have been annoyingly ignoring because they're more interested in bitching about used games. But yeah. the self-publishing issue has just supposedly resolved itself. Apparently. Uh, we, we will see how true that is. So, news that came out very, very recently. Of course, if you are watching the VOD on YouTube, this has been out for some time. But if you're watching live, like you should be, then we now know the Microsoft will be letting, quote, developers publish their own titles on its Xbox One console. Mark Witten from Microsoft released the following statement, saying, Our vision is that every person can be a creator, that every Xbox One can be used for development, that every game and experience can take advantage of all of the features of Xbox One and Xbox Live. This means self-publishing. This means connect to the cloud achievements. This means great discoverability on Xbox Live. And we'll have more details on the program and the timeline at Gamescom in August. But what does that mean? Not a damn thing. <laughs> right? That's gibberish. That's gibberish speak. Well, I mean, they will have more details on it in August, but apparently they eventually wanted to just come out and say, we'll have self-publishing guys on us, we're just not going to tell you how. <laughs> well, that, okay. I'm just worried that it'll be like Xbox Community Games or the mm. Xbox Live Indie Channel. Indie, uh, yeah, right. well, it's just a useless dumping ground. Yes. Yeah, and that's where I'm concerned. I mean, the languaging that they're offering... Uh, suggests that, right? That we're going to have our same sort of unsearchable, unsortable uh, pile of user-generated content. Yeah. And I'm all for user-generated content, but I would like to see some curation on their side. Mm. And I'm worried that the curation will be, do you have a publisher? Um, 
Yeah, mm. that that's a, that's definitely a possibility. I think that if you want to look at the state of Xbox Live Indie right now, then you will see maybe for every every decent game that's on there. I'm not going to say great game because there aren't that many great games on Xbox Indie. I'm afraid. Sorry, it's just true. You will find a hundred Minecraft clones and nonsense shooters and dating games and crap like that, and it is an uncurated mess. It, and it's you cannot find good games there the only thing i think you can really do is kind of look at the top selling list which will be full of minecraft clones you know, less so now that minecraft is actually out on xbox live but prior to that i remember going on that segment section and seeing i'm pretty sure i saw i made a game with zombies in it and nine clones of minecraft and that was the top 10 yeah well and i think i think a lot of people because indie games are getting like more and more in the, the the culture and, and people are like wow those indie games are great we need to always remember 90 percent of indie games are trash just well, garbage this is true about everything right yes. like 90 yeah. percent of tv shows 90 percent of video games whatever you have yeah but they're totally worth it for that 10 percent. i just would like to make sure that yes, we get to yeah. see to see the 10 percent. yep exactly so i've got to ask because this ties in nicely to green light what level of curation do you think should be applied because right now what we're seeing with valve is their definition of curation is well we have a system that says the public decides however the number of votes that you need to do that is fairly obscenely high and also completely obfuscated there are games getting on which were not as highly ranked as other games which don't get on for whatever reason there's not an arbitrary poll that you need to pass in order to actually just guarantee get on the service and then of course there are the other games that just got passed entirely how do you curate that and make sure that you find the best stuff keep out the awful stuff but still allow enough leeway to say well i don't think this game is very good but other people might i i, I don't think there's a oh, go for it go just go no, no, go for it just go. No. okay fine i will no. god so, damn it um, this is like a canadian attempting to cross the street no you no you come on wow. get out of it. <laughs> no, i was gonna say that uh I, I think that in theory having talked to a lot of the indie developers for for the Greenlight show uh, there is like a weird thing where uh, once you get above a certain number of votes then you're on this list. And the list is what Valve takes a look at when they decide. Because in theory, what it's supposed to be is people vote for what they think is the best, and then those people are decided upon by Valve to go like in, right? And yeah. when you think about it, it's like, oh yeah, no, that, I, I can understand how that works. So they can sort of filter out what would be, you know, just voted be, based on like what 4chan decided to do that day, things like that. And so, oh yeah, we got this. We're gonna we're gonna curate this. But also in theory, communism sounded great too. It just doesn't work. And really? I feel like <laughs> really that's where you went with that. <laughs> okay. I did, thank you. All right. And so I feel I feel like this is I mean, in theory, the way they do green light sounds like it should be flawless. But because they don't follow their own rules and they do mm -hmm. whatever the hell they want to do, they screw it up for themselves. So you have all these people who are like, we're on the top 15 list. Oh, thank you guys so much. You helped us out. And then they sit there for a year. And it's yeah. like, why? I mean, people want this thing. Eventually you should let it on. But then there's other things that no one votes for where Steam's like, sure, you're in. It's like, what? And so they, uh, they screwed up themselves. They caused mm -hmm. their own problems. Yes, that, that is unfortunately very true. We've spoken about that with the paranormal activity issue. But James, what was your comment on this? Well, my, my comment is mostly that I don't think that community curation is the wrong way to go. But I think that one of the problems with Greenlight is it's so hard to sort Greenlight itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, if I am actually an active community member interested in seeing the best games get on Steam, I can't do it. Right. Mm. Like it, it takes a monumental amount of effort to go find things that I might actually want to help put up there. Yeah. Right. And more to the uh, point, a lot of people just don't want to do it because it's a pain in the ass to try. There's no right. incentive. And so I think that there's uh, the only way currently to get greenlit is to have a lot of outside publicity, mm -hmm. um, yep. which is not, in my opinion, the spirit, the intended effect of green light, right? Mm. Yeah. I mean, have you ever oh, yes, tried they... to? Have you ever tried to go through green light? I feel like that's their only way, because the way green lights put together is just like when you're talking about the in, the indie space on Xbox. It's just they're all thrown up, and you can't really search it. You just have to like keep scrolling through and look at what they have, which is garbage, garbage. Right, but. I think that lack the the poor search tool is part of the problem, right? I think there are ways 
to i mean we have user curated spaces like wikipedia that have uh fantastic search capabilities right um and i think that that's one of the things that's lacking right um, the ability as a user to find things that might be experimentally interesting to me, right, and get my hands on them and play them. Um, and so I think that the users need more tools if they're going to effectively curate is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and th you know, there's then the idea that if you're going to spend a significant amount of time looking at green lights, then I would expect something in return for that because you are basically doing Valve's job for them in that respect. Right. Yes. And if you don't spend a lot of time, you just like vote for random stuff, then that defeats the point of the process. There's, there's no reason for the process to even be there, which makes it very difficult because if you incentivize it and say, say trading cards, you know, that's a good way to incentivize it for the people that care about that stuff. But then I'll just click random stuff to get trading cards. So it actually is, um, we have systems to deal with that because we have to deal with that in games all the time, right? Unless the majority of your votes go with the majority of opinion, right? Like, you don't get anything, right? There's lots of ways to ensure that you aren't just randomly clicking. Um, and so I actually think that we can deal with people trying to game that system, but the system has to be better in the first place. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think it does need to be incentivized. Hmm. Big shout out to IndieStatic.com for actually going through all the green light games and picking out what is good and what is garbage. Yeah. Good work, yeah, gentlemen. Indie Static and also frequently on top of the whole green light issue, actually, one of the only sites to be repeatedly covering it and have been hammering yep. on the paranautical activity issue, which Valve are doing a fantastic job of stonewalling the shit out of, I might add. Which is yeah. irritating to say the least. And I'm not gonna let them bloody go on it. It's nonsense. You know, we sent them an email actually asking for a for a statement on the matter, and like we just waited three weeks and we just got nothing. It's like, well, <laughs> I'm going what I got then. Sorry, you know, yeah. if you're pissed off about me condemning you. You had a chance to tell your side of the story and you chose not to do it. And you can say, oh well, you know, we don't think the green light process is very good. Yeah, we get that, but you're not fixing it. Uh, we we know it's not good. This isn't news to us. It's, uh, so, yeah. what do you guys think they can do other than essentially tear it down and start again? I, that I, might I don't. Not be the I worst don't think idea, they should. Right? I don't think they. I don't think they should because I feel like a, a lot of the developers. I, there's got to be a way to fix it internally the way it is. Because tearing it down, I know a lot of people put a lot of work into getting attention drawn to that, and they're going to be like, you mean I have to resubmit and I have to do all this stuff over again? And there's right. going to be just a lot of people who are put off by it. But it might be a good idea. I don't know. I, I don't know how these I, things I, work. I would. So. I would argue that because they actually built that audience and attention anyway regardless of what is done with the green light system that audience doesn't suddenly disappear they still have people interested in it so i don't yeah. think the tearing it down and completely remaking it is actually going to hurt that many people i think you could probably get away with that but um it's what really what i want to see from the system is consistency that's the biggest problem I've had from it up to this point, the fact that they don't follow their own rules and that they seem yeah. to move the goalposts yep. repeatedly. And the Paranautical Activity episode is just one of those things, you know? And mm -hmm. it's probably the biggest and most public example of the system just making no damn sense and just say, well, so why was this denied? Like, no, I want an explanation valve. No, no, no. no. tell us why it was denied. Like, we don't discuss that. I, right, well, that's not useful then, is it? You know, it's, it's definitely not the game because we, we just played that on the Greenlight show. It's fantastic. It's a really great game. So it's not the game. It's not gameplay. It's not, there's nothing offensive in the game. It's, it's all business this. side garbage yeah. which is just well, yeah i just want i want this the system simplified with a clear set of rules that is stated available publicly i want that information to be there for the people using the system to have as opposed to just the developers and i want valve to stick with it you know i want them to abide by their own rules i i don't find the system ideal i think that a popularity contest for devs that should be working on their game not working on marketing their game would be is is a waste of time but it's either that or trust them with creating, curating the damn thing themselves again, in which they didn't do well either, and see Space Pirates and Zombies and Unepic. Dodger, yes. So I almost never use Greenlight because, again, I find I it do either. awful. Um, yeah. But I'm curious, you don't have to have a demo in order to be on Greenlight, right? No. no. no you don't. Weirdly, no. That is I something feel that like I wish you had. 
I feel like that's something that I would really love. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think you yeah. have to, you have to be able to play the games. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. otherwise, how can you possibly judge? Um, because that's like we were. Um, I was talking with Jesse about this the other day that uh, when you're when you're asking people to support you, you have to be able to give them something to experience or something to look forward to aside from just this vague idea. And I know that they have to make videos and all this other stuff in order to to show you something. But if they gave you a demo, if every game that was on Greenlight gave you a demo, I feel like I would be on there way more often. Yeah. And it would then need to make those demos easier to browse. Because I feel oh, like right. a system whereby you have a library of stuff you can instantly try for free is compelling. Yes. Right. Uh, and then what you do is you toss toss an achievement or a trading card in for beating the damn demo or completing an objective yeah. in or something along those you lines. You know what I would love? I would love if there was just like a random button. Oh, and you just play like, random game? It. it doesn't even tell yeah. you what it is while just it downloads click it. it. And every, every demo is like embedded into the browser somehow. So you can just click random and it's like, here's a demo. And that just downloads click random, it. here's a new demo. And you're just like playing all the games. That would like, be that a would really be interesting way of experiencing that. games. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, admittedly, there are there are downsides with that. Creating a demo is a costly process. It's not free. Yeah. But I think that is also one of the things that will help decrease the funnel into uh, green light, which is something that needs to happen, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. I think it's actually positive because, I mean, demo is going to cost you a little bit more than just making the game, but a lot of that you're going to have to make to actually get this game out the door anyway. And I think that that's a reasonable hurdle and a reasonable expectation and a much better uh, a way for a viewer, for a, a member of the community to help judge. Um, mm. But on the other hand, <laughs> we're saying all this, I at the same time want to give a shout out to the to Valve because they tried to do something which granted was for them, they didn't have enough personnel, they didn't want to pay enough personnel to solely be there to do nothing but curate. Um, but on the other hand, they are empowering the community to decide what games really get a wide platform, and that's going to allow some games that theoretically wouldn't otherwise um, mm. have the opportunity to be on Steam. And so yeah, totally. I do think that the idea is positive, and in some ways I feel bad that they get as much flack as they do for trying to do something that was positive and just doing it very poorly. Mm. Unfortunately, there are instances, and I could go on about the Blizzard WCS situation for hours, but I'm not going to do that, where trying to do something positive and doing it poorly can do more damage than just leaving it alone entirely. But anyway, yeah, so we now know at least there will be publication of some description. We don't know how it's going to work. We'll find out more about that in Gamescom, and that's that. But on the other hand, right, Paranormal Activity, I'm not Paranormal Activity, um, uh, Deadly Premonitions is what I was looking for. Deadly Premonitions, right? probably would never have gotten onto steam if it wasn't for green light like that i mean mm-hmm. given the fact that they made it go through green light it probably is something that they would have just been they would have just rejected or would have sat in torpor forever well um, if, if yeah, they, they will but i mean the, do you really think they should have rejected that though i mean a, a game no. with proven sales figures on multiple platforms and a cult following really i don't get that i clearly all. don't right but at the same time it says to me that uh green light is doing some good by the fact that that ever got greenlit. If they were going to make it go through the greenlit greenlit process in the first place, I'm not sure it would have gotten the okay internally from Valve if it had just been submitted directly, Mm. right? Which I'm sure it was. Yeah, and and honestly, I think if that's the case, then Valve needs to look at themselves again because some of the titles that have got on Steam, I I, I hate pointing at Cranky Cat, but I'm going to point at Cranky Cat. I actually (laughs) spoke a lot to those guys, and I I like them a lot. They got a publishing deal with Steam like a year ago before the Greenlight even really came about. Right. But their, their game is a very casual experience, that like i can't understand why it's on steam unless there's some kind of internal quota that says we need some more casual games on the service so you know let's gather up a few there are plenty of titles that get onto steam that don't really deserve to be there yeah. ripd being a prime king example it, th- <laughs> they don't curate based but on games Ride to Hell Retribution, Ride to Hell fucking Retribution. You know, there is no... They do not curate based on quality. Yeah? So I, I have to wonder, like, if they did reject Deadly Premonition in the first instance, what their basis for that actually was. I would be really interested to find that out. Uh, do we know, maybe... Uh, th- I'm curious about this, because I just thought about... Do we know cost? What Like, do you have to pay anything to be on steam hundred dollars hundred dollars for green light it's to stop troll posts well that's green light is there what about steam 
I don't think it's, on... it's 30%, but that's it. Mm. 30% of no, your sales. I'm... Yeah. Is it possible that maybe we're looking at the wrong way and maybe they were like, how can we save money? Let's put it on green light first. Is that a thing? Well, putting well, on green light what... to build up publicity for it? It's I, more than I, that. I, they want to know what's going to sell before they put it up on Steam. Um, I mean, that's the that is the actual idea behind Greenlight yeah. was that um, this way they I'll only put up risks. things that they're going to make a profit on, right? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, yeah, they take. Maybe that weird. was them testing the waters. But I, I, sorry, Jesse, I think you're like on the different page to James here. Jesse, you're saying that I don't think the guys behind Deadly Premonition put it on Greenlight first. They probably applied to Steam, and Valve said no. Okay, and that's what that's what I was saying. Like that's maybe they, there was a strategic reason for doing it. I can't see a single dev ever wanting to go through green light as an option where they had a different option right. <laughs> it's just that seems unlikely uh but yeah anyway so let's go off the green light topic then and talk about releases there aren't too many so this should not take too long so we do have a few games that are coming out this week the steam sale has finally ended which means we are getting games on steam again which is always Yay. nice so mm -hmm. there's a couple of recent releases that came out that i would like to talk about the raven being one of them actually i have a feeling this will be something that dodger will want to play the raven the, the raven legacy of a master thief is a three-part episodic kind of point and click murder mystery in the vein of sherlock holmes and i what i've actually played of it which this is the kind of game i would usually despise actually has <laughs> a, has a good amount of charm to it and an interesting amount of investigation basically a lot of it's set on the orient express and it's really quite the thing actually oh, as it turns out hmm. yeah. really quite the thing so that just came out i'll be hopefully looking at that over the next couple of days in greater detail but what i've played of it so far has actually impressed me which is greatly surprising and we also have It'll Do that just came out. I don't yep. know. It'll do. Is that right? It, oh, that's what it is. All right, that's the joke. It'll do. Okay. It'll All do. Right. Yep. All right. It'll. That'll yeah. do, pig. That'll it, it, do. It doesn't that'll work. Do. It doesn't work for me because I'm British and I pronounce it do. So. It'll do. <laughs> It'll do. It's as simple. I'm as looking that. at this right now. Perfect. What is this game about? I am not entirely certain. I, I, I imagine. I, I imagine the name came from. They just after a while were like, "Eh, it'll do." <laughs> Probably. That's, that's the game. That's the game. They're like, "Eh, yeah, it's uh, fine." Top top down adventure game of some description. Uh, yeah. I like how they just like flat out say five hours of gameplay. Like, all right, cool. Man, I, I wish <laughs> more games just said how long it was. That would be nice. We get lengths on films, but I guess it's a little difficult to put it on a game. Uh, what else? Rugby Challenge 2 for $50. Jonah yeah. Lumo's Rugby Challenge 2. What's actually unusual about that is it's a sports game on PC, but there you go. Uh, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. And we also have Teleglitch, Die More Edition. Oh, God, the suffering that game entails. What? Oh. what? <laughs> oh, man. James, have you played Teleglitch? A little bit. Oh, God, that game is a dick. <laughs> I uh, just, I, I might have just bugged them to do that for a fan Friday. I was like, can I get a copy of that? Oh, I feel like I am, yeah, I feel like I'm in for. Oh, I can give, give you a code for that. I'll give nice. you a code just to see you suffer. Oh, no, I, I, oh, I got a code oh. and I installed it. I'm just waiting for Friday. And I was oh, like, man. I watched the trailer and I'm not looking forward to it. That. That Teleglitch is basically a roguelike with very very much Doom-like elements in it, based on a lot of shooting, but it's got very abstract graphics. It's like... I heard it's, like, very horrifying, just scary as balls. It's, it's not... It's tense. Like, it's scary right. because of how yeah. difficult it is and how much you know you'll probably get murdered around the next corner. And the line-of-sight system, that helps in that an awful lot. It's an interesting game. Like, it... It rep it's like the graphics are more representative of what's going on than actually, you know, being what's any anything in particular. Like when you shoot in that game, it has a very strange effect on the screen. Like it tries to convey the idea of the the motion and the force of a bullet without actually legitimately showing you a bullet. It's huh. really it's really hard to explain what that game actually does in that respect. But it's ugly as balls. <laughs> I'm just saying. It is. But it, it is a very interesting roguelike experience that will kick your ass horribly. Even the original mm -hmm. version of this was difficult. Apparently now it's even worse. So there you go. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, Teleglitch. Oh, that game is evil. 
And that, is, and that is now on Steam with an even more difficult edition because that's what we asked for, right? Yeah. You know what really interests me? Within the last five minutes, a game came out on Steam called El Sword. Genres. I'm looking at it right now. Genres. Yes. Free to play action adventure RPG platformer casual. It's true. Perfect. Um, it, but it, nothing's going to beat Dungeon Fighter, in my opinion, for that genre. Yeah. It's Dungeon Fighter. So good. Yeah. This is a dungeon. <laughs> it, it is actually great. This is a Dungeon Fighter esque game, I think, by the looks of it. Although it, it yeah. is. Seems like they have a. It seems to be a 3D game as opposed to a 2D Wait, side scroller. What? No, it says. It says right here Winner 2011 Best Side Scroller. It what? doesn't look like a side scroller to me. It's doing at it all. Easy. Not at all. No, I don't. That's very strange because I'm looking at this overworld shot, and that is it, it's not really scrolling to the side. Let's just uh, let's just put it that way. That's a very. It has, I don't know. It has like all these awards, like favorite action casual oh, of 2000. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a side scroll. It's just those those screenshots are extremely misleading. <laughs> huh. It actually looks all right. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think it is. I think it is a Dungeon Fighter esque game, and I just have to. I would be surprised if they were able to, to be surpass bad. Dungeon Fighter in terms of mechanics. But like, yeah. I'd be super happy to see one, right? Because I, I, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with our uh, side-scrolling RPG action RPG with infinite customization, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I am totally fine with that existing, and may actually be downloading it at the moment. <laughs> I might actually look into this, uh, frankly, because uh, this is like this is very brawler esque, and I do love my brawlers. And the the coolest thing about Dungeon Fighter is it reminded me of an MMO version of Guardian Heroes, and as a result, it was just absolutely fantastic. I don't know. I mean, it, there's a lot of people saying that this doesn't suck. So uh, while we were I'm gone, by the way, scrolling down, it looks like uh, Greenlight Game Bleed finally came out. Oh yeah, yeah, that game's really fun. Out, yeah. It's really fun. You it's should really play that. hard as well. Bleed it's like five dollars, guys. Go get it. Bleed is pretty good. Yeah. So what's actually coming out of the next few days? Well, I can tell you. Fear yeah, not. Any anything? Yeah, Shadowrun. <laughs> that's kind of the, that's the big thing this week, really. Shadowrun's oh. coming out on the twenty fifth. That will be available. We don't know precisely when on the twenty fifth at this point, but it is definitely coming out at some point on the twenty fifth. We do know. Do in approximately know. 20 hours from now. Ah, that's assuming Steam doesn't muck it up. 19 hours, 16 minutes, 43 seconds. There you go. Ah. So if you're watching the VOD, it's already out. Go and have a look at it. It looks awesome. It does look awesome. Yes, very much. <laughs> you can't, I can, I can, I can talk about it. You can't talk about it. <laughs> Back. Oh. All right. Alright, so other stuff that's coming out, Castle Storm on the 29th, I actually can talk about that because they sent me the best email ever. Review embargo is for the 28th, but you can say whatever you want about it or do what WTF is. I'm like, yes, I got the edge. Here it is. Uh, I played a bit of this. It is a game about storming castles. Yeah, no shit, right? It, it, it looks and plays kind of like, you remember those really old Flash games where you're defending your castle against waves of stuff? Yes, and yeah, yeah, You yeah. have to aim your blister and things like that. It's like a very advanced version of that. Like you can summon a hero into the middle of the map that you actually directly control and can do combos and moves with. You can also customize your castle and build different parts of it. The, the castle kind of collapses in a physics-based way, so you target weak points in the castle to bring them down. You can get loads of different projectiles and level them up, including a, a sheep with irritable bowel syndrome. That's that's a legitimate projectile. Perfect. All sorts of different troop types. There's two different factions in that game, including Vikings, which is always fun indeed. And also has a competitive multiplayer mode where you you level nice. up and you gain more gold to le you upgrade your different abilities. What I played of it, it's it's been it's buggy right now, but I imagine that's going to get fixed before it comes out. It's surprisingly fun. It's it's good stuff, especially competitively. Tr trying to find that just that one place where you know most of his castles going to fall flat if you just target that enough. Oh, you can shoot the other guy's projectiles out the air with your own as well, which is kind of neat. So When does that come out? The 29th? Yeah, the 29th. It's actually already out on 360, but the PC version is coming out on the 29th. So what else have we got? I got to give a shout out to Skulls of Shogun because I'm going to dinner with two of their designers later tonight. Sell out. So I have to. Sell out. No, actually, it's it's awesome. <laughs> if yeah, you want is. a like mid-core casual tactics game, um, it's quite solid. And yes, I, I know I played they're it. doing a lot more to add. They're finally adding all the like um, RPG elements to it, which will be 
I think will add a lot. Yeah, they're also finally bringing it to a format that can, people can actually play it on. That's always nice. Yes. So, yes. And great flag their next Windows game. 8. Did you see? Did you see the little bit of their next game that they showed at uh, at E3? No. Oh, they have they have a really cool space fighter game coming up. Ooh, like that sounds like fun. Yeah, for the PS4. It's gonna be one of the like God damn it. I believe <laughs> indie launch titles. I'm not sure. Right. I'm not on a commitment or anything, but it's it's pretty great. It's it is trying to take that you know that moment in any of your old space fighter anime like Macross or whatever where you're flying through a thousand missiles dodging all this stuff like they've got it down it's nice it's pretty fantastic. sounds like fun pixel junk monsters ultimate hd is making its way to playstation vita yes the vita is going to get a game that's always nice yay uh, hopefully i mean pixel junk's always been a fun series so that should be good and on july the 31st rise of the triad for pc yes <laughs> Getting, I'm supposed to be getting code for that today. Dave Oshri, where are you? It's currently 5.46 p.m. You're late. Get on it. Come on. Give me my yeah. old school shooter action. Wow. Yeah, Rise of the Triad looking pretty killer. I played multiplayer last packs, and I believe I came in first and was better than them, so I like that game. So it's always good. So let's let's crack that out. It's got a full single player campaign as well as the multiplayer. Dog mode is still in the game. Just want to let you know. As is the drunk missile launcher. So very important to know. Good shit. And Cloudbreak Kingdom is coming out to PC, Wii U, and Xbox Live as well on July the thirty first. As well as Super Frog HD for PlayStation Three. Super PlayStation Frog. Vita. I, HD. I, yeah, I'm oh. actually very... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to know what that is. Common mistake. Oh, hang on. Was Super Frog that old MS-DOS game? Oh, yeah, what? it was. It was for Amiga and shit. That, why on earth is this, is this being... remake? Re Apparently it is. I can't find a damn thing about it on YouTube at all. I look for Super Frog HD and I don't find anything other than the Amiga stuff. It's very, very odd. Huh. I have no idea what this is. That was an old Team 17 game. In 1993, I think that came out. Why on earth is that getting remade? Because it's going to be beautiful, TB. Yeah, totally. I... Beautiful. And apparently, according to Digital Spy, it is a worthwhile remake of an old school platformer. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, if it's, it is, so you if know. it's not bad. It's all right. Super Frog HD is a great platformer in its own right that works as an, both an effective homage and a means of breathing new life into an underrated classic, apparently. Uh, and it seems like you collect apples. Good. I must attest I, I'm good. not giving a damn about that. Yep. That's, that's not my a thing. thing. It's not my thing. No, I'm not gonna so that's the releases, pretty much. And we, we have about 50 minutes left of the show, so I really want to talk about James's project instead of wasting our time with crappy trailers as much as I would like to watch Alien Rage. What? Come on! Oh. No, that's fine. I agree. Let's, Let's we'll, do it. We'll talk about the project, and if we have enough time, we will start. We will end with Alien Rage. Okay. <laughs> I think Jack's Good. proposing those two yes. will be perfect. This will be, this will be amazing. All right, so James, you have a new project going on, and I would like to hear about it and go Sure. So basically, um, I have just raised a bunch of money on Rocket Hub. We're at like $43,000 out of the 50K that I was trying to raise to see if I can take the next year of my life and roll back a lot of the other stuff I do, roll back my business, and see if I can help change the public conversation around games. Because right now, every time we hear games in the media, uh, very often they, they're the whipping boy for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Very often they're demonized. And uh, truth be told, when I see representatives um, from the gaming community come out and talk about them, all we do is defend games. And what we need to do is move from defending games, from just talking about why games aren't bad, to talking about what good they can do. Because there's amazing things that games can do for education, for science, um, for our community in general, and for our sort of civic awareness across the board, we one of the great projects of the 21st century, in my opinion, is to make life in a lot of ways more engaging, right? Because truth be told, uh, a lot of the things that we do in our everyday lives, our schooling, our work, uh, we sort of – modern work, modern schooling was invented in the latter half of the 19th century, right? And it hasn't changed much. It's remained about as engaging as it ever was. And yet today, 
our leisure time is so much more engaging, um, is so much more compelling with films, books, that uh, television, all these things that we've learned, we've spent billions of dollars, more than in the rest of human history combined, in learning how to make engaging. If we only use that for our leisure time, I mean, to me, that's criminal, right? And mm -hmm. the only way we're going to use it for more things is if we start getting past this idea across the board, in the public, in the media, in the political perception that games are a children's pastime, right? That they're a way to kill the hours between work and sleep for people who aren't quite adults. Because that's just false, right? We've all had meaningful experiences in games. We've all had games affect us in some way. We've all learned things from games. Um, so that's what I'm going to spend the next year of my life doing, trying to change that dialogue by both engaging with politicians, uh, working with grant organizations to make sure that there are more grants going to these sort of games, and, of course, working with the media to start talking about uh, all the good the games are currently doing. Mm -hmm. Can I send you to my, my dad so you can explain that to him? So he can, he'll finally be able to explain it to the people that they, they meet when they ask what their son does. And they're like, <laughs> uh... Oh, you need you to talk I... to my dad about that. You know, he, he'll be able to explain it finally. My, I think my dad used to pretty much hate everything I did until I started making a, a fairly large amount of money out of it. <laughs> and then suddenly they're like, oh, well, okay, this is great. Keep it up. <laughs> but, I mean, I think in that case... are very supportive and lovely. <laughs> I think, I think in that, <laughs> that situation, though, it's always like it's concern for your, from your parents, like, oh, is he going to be okay kind of thing more than I hate what you like. No, no but yeah. I, I think that's the perception, though, is that it's like, yeah. wait, you're going to do what with games? What? And I think if, if going in you had, like, it's not just sitting around playing games and, and acting like you're 10. It's there's something totally different behind that. And I, good on you. I think this will be great. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that the public perception should be that much different from books or any other media, right? Like, no. Sure. In any artistic media, uh, I would say that the majority of the works may not be art, but there is very quality stuff here. And you never have a parent who went up and say, would come up to you and say, why are you reading all those books, right? Um, or at least as much as Unless, like, of course, you happen to be Matilda. Oh, Actually, Matilda. My sister got grounded from books all the time. Really? <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Because she wouldn't do her chores, she'd just sit and read all day. <laughs> anyway, continue. Too much of a good thing is bad regard. Too much media consumption is bad regardless of what kind of medium you do it within, right? Right. Yes. Um, but the other thing that we need to do on our side as players of games is start thinking more about how we approach games. Because very often, I was just talking about books, right? Very often you approach a book and you don't tune out, right? You don't deny the possibility that you're going to get something from it. But sort of as a games industry, we've trained our player base that these are just for fun, right? Um, and so it's very much, it's much more difficult for creators to express things. We're talking about things like Papers, Please, and we're just getting there. But uh, we still can't express things with the language of games to the level that I think that we'll be able to. Hmm. Um, because in general, as an audience, uh, we've been trained to to just miss those, to miss miss metaphor in the language of play, right? Okay, I, I'd like to propose uh, just I like, put an example forward, and I'd like to know what you think about this. It's it's interesting that you should say that we kind of as consumers have been trained into that kind of situation. We've been put into that corner, and that we're unable to absorb this stuff, but. Is there not also some responsibility upon the developer? I'd like to give an example of Bioshock Infinite, which is a game that I've heavily criticized and said, look, they, this game seems to think it's more clever than it really is. It deals with its issues in a very ham-fisted way. And the biggest problem that game has is not even all of that. It's not even the case that, you know, they won't even say a racial slur. Like, they're flat. it's a racist society, yet they won't put a racial slur in the game because it might offend people. The biggest right. problem is you can't tell a message, you can't really express a, a real thoughtful message to people if the majority of the game involves slaughtering thousands of faceless people. It, so, I, I completely, I mean, we did an episode on exactly the same thing, right? Like, and Dan toned down some of what I was talking about, Bioshock Infinite. We could, we could go for a whole session. On Bioshock Infinite. Good, no good. <laughs> but first Bioshock, right? First Bioshock was much more tightly written. Everything in that game was about the central message and exploring a central idea. There was a game <laughs> that you did shoot your way through, but shooting your way through made sense, right? Um, it it made sense in a Randian objectivist personal empowerment universe, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, 
And so I think we just have to think about the mechanics to deliver these messages. But on the other hand, all the time, I mean, I talk about the fact that you're right. There's because it's it's a chicken and egg problem. Um, major developers and publishers are afraid of doing some of these things because uh, we were told it won't sell, right? Um, it's amazing to me how many times I've picked up a rifle and fought on the beaches of Normandy, fought, uh, uh, even played as a Nazi, and yet never been into a concentration camp in a video game, right? Mm -hmm. To me, in some ways, it should be more horrifying, more uh, mentally disturbing to allow the player to play as a Nazi than to show what happened, right? And yet, that's not where we're. That's not how we've set up our industry. Yeah, I, I guess fear is very much a factor there, quite frankly. And I suppose it's 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 got to be a combination of these different issues that we have, in the sense that games are perceived, as you said, as a fun toy, basically for for leisure time. And we even have companies that are directly responsible for, for perpetuating this. Apple is a prime right. example. That bloody thing where they basically just said, this is not what games are for. Like, games are not for expressing these kinds of ideas. Like, really, well, who died and made right. you the boss of that? Uh, the rejection of the game, which was based, I believe, on the Syrian conflict, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Refusing to allow them to sell that. I mean, just basic outright censorship. So... Yeah, I think we have we do have a lot of problems. If you do wish to support James's project, you can head on over to tinyurl.com slash games for good. That is tinyurl.com slash games for good. That will take you to the Rocket Hub. You are almost at your goal, if I recall correctly. We're so close. We're yep. so close. We got a little bit over a month left and I we're gonna get there. And if we can if we can meet our first stretch goal, I'm actually gonna hire a PR agency to do nothing but focus on this which i think we as an industry and as consumers need on our side yeah definitely tinyurl.com slash games for good folks if you wish to contribute to this particular project is there anything else you would like to say on it james before we kind of wrap things up here no i mean i, I think that was great i think that uh for all of you out there it's just a question of looking at games and seeing what more we can get out of them right because i know they've literally changed my life yeah Cool. Very cool. Excellent. So that's currently going on right now. And you've got about a month left on the funding there. So let, let's see if we can push it over the edge by Friday. That would be cool, wouldn't it? That'd be pretty great. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up the Co-Optional Podcast, does it not? Seems to. So all we've really got left to do is to talk about what we will be doing during the week. So, Jesse, why don't you start us off? What you got planned? What's going on? Uh, this week, you should look forward to tomorrow or yesterday, depending on when you're watching, the... Uh, Broken Quest live stream. It's a show, and you're gonna love it. It's wonderful. Yes, I'm not indeed. saying there's a special guest the first episode, but there is, and his name is Total Biscuit. So, um, <laughs> you should watch it. It'll be great. It's very funny, and uh, live stream is happening tomorrow at noon. Yeah, the right? live stream goes from noon to four to kind of celebrate the first episode going up. So both things or are happening. Yesterday. Be sure and to watch both. It. Or yeah, or yesterday. <laughs> this whole time traveling thing is really starting to get irritating. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's yeah. it's all very dark brown. You wouldn't understand. Just know that it's that you missed something amazing. And if you're watching it in the past, thanks for watching. Indeed, uh, Dodger. Heard. What you got coming up? Uh, wait, Jesse. Did you say anything that's happening on your channel? <laughs> no. Oh, um. <laughs> I just ignored it. Literally. <laughs> Literally, it's more, it's, it's, look, if, if you have ever been to my channel, you know what you're getting. And that ain't gonna ever change, so either you loves it, and you're like, God, this guy is the best, or you're like, well, I have to go puke a little. It's one of the two. That's it. Well, so, stop by, <laughs> stop by, watch, enjoy, and let's have some fun. That's it, that's it. Mwah. Jesse does Let's Plays, guys. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, that's right. Oh, hi, new people. Hi. So if you're watching this for the first time, uh, you probably, probably are best like... that you don't necessarily yeah. assume that everybody knows who you are. You arrogant that's son right. of a bitch. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure they do. They just decided not to watch. <laughs> they chose <laughs> like, to ignore oh, no. you up to no, this point. Will... No, no, this is bad. Oh, yeah. Georgia, what you got coming up this week? What's going on? Uh, so Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, I do gaming news, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays right now, I'm doing Dead Space 3 with Mr. Jesse, wherever he is in association with oh, oh. me. 
I need I need to interrupt. I'm sorry. Uh, I just got I just got a message from yes. uh, our dear our, our dear colleague William, who told me to remind all of you that Friday is our Area 51 blog, uh, oh, our vlog. No. For before we went to Vegas for Evo, we went to Area 51 and it was amazing. And yeah, that will I be Friday. Can't imagine this is going to be anywhere near as interesting as it sounds. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, a lot. There was a lot of. I'm just saying there was a lot of coincidences and weird unmarked vans. Uh -huh. and Will freaking out thinking we're going to get arrested, which is the best. So watch it. Wonderful. Yes. So, Dodger, did you get through everything, or did he just interrupt you mid-flow? Uh, I interrupted. Oh, I interrupted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for those of you who watch the Borderlands 2 playthroughs, we're going to start with uh, my cousin Tierney. We're going to start putting those up twice a week instead of just once. So um, my so parents will be, be going up. Sometime in, like, in the next millennium. Yeah, you know, like like maybe before we die, we'll actually finish this game. Uh, so my parts will be going up on Wednesdays and her parts will be going up on Saturdays like you are used to. I also have another channel called Dexterity Bonus where I do daily vlogs and drink coffee and tell you about my life. So watch that if you want. <laughs> and that's me. That's my life. There cool. you go. So James, aside from this whole games for good thing, you do have a couple of other things that you do on a semi-regular basis. You want to talk a little bit about them and where people can find them? Yeah, um, if you go over to Penny Arcade Television, uh, you can find Extra Credits, which is a show about uh, doing more with games and about game design because we, on a weekly basis, on every Tuesday, uh, I guess it's Tuesday at midnight, it's so technically Wednesday, um, we explore from an industry perspective uh, sort of how these games get built, uh, what are the design ideas that go into them, and then uh, the larger social issues that roll out of us as a gaming community. Uh, and beyond that, um, you can you can you can always come hang out in one of my classes at DigiPen. Uh, but honestly, Yay! if you're in Ontario this weekend, uh, I'm going to be at Con Bravo this weekend. Uh, I've got like four or five talks there, and yeah. Uh, come uh, ask me anything you want. It'll be fun. Uh, that's about it for me. Yay! We have a statement regarding the FOV slider in pay a Payday 2. Oh, it's here. Goodness. From, uh -huh. from yeah. Elmia, the developer uh -huh. from Overkill. <laughs> Can people calm down about the FOV slider? Thanks. You remember the purpose no. of a beta, right? Just making sure. Thanks to everyone who brought up the FOV slider issue in a civilized manner without yelling refund. I appreciate it. We'll look, we will look into implementing it. Please spread the word that we are investigating the implementation of FOV slider. <laughs> and I think that it is sort of in, in, in you know, maybe Look, in, in between these lines, it's like, please don't kill us, Total Biscuit. Please call off the hounds. All right. <laughs> Get it I'll into your bloody your game, game and I'll stop complaining. It was in your first one. You got no excuse. This is, the, this is the problem. I love it, but this is actually a problem that as we start demanding that we get to play games earlier and earlier in cycle because we can patch them, yep, right? That's as very true. Doing games through Steam and all this stuff, there are going to be parts missing. And yeah. as a developer, oh my God, getting all that flooding mail telling you, you need to do these things. And yeah, we know, yeah. but we're not there yet. And beta so it's is so beta, for the love of God. Yeah, TB is the problem. I'm not the problem. Same. I say beta is beta all the time. As soon as the game comes out and it sucks, that's when I ravage it. You know, you can do whatever you want before <laughs> that. That's fine. I'll I give think, you the benefit of the doubt. Just went, I think you just went against what you said you do, because nope. you called them out on it in beta. Yes, yes, but you're I the then Steam said it's currently in beta. You, the problem you're is, the Jesse, you, you only viewers. listen to half of what are. I say. That's the main problem. It's like, yes, and he said this, and then you just like, uh. <laughs> You did it, James. You tore the family apart. You're the, you're the valve yeah, of reviewers. That's what yeah. I figured is why you So we're going to just have a parallel conversation while they yell at each other? Yeah, I'm going to have to have mean, someone <laughs> green light your face, Jesse. That's how it's going to be. Whoa. Getting so real. Valve of reviewers. Can you just like drop that mic and walk out? I, it's attached. Hold to, on, let me it's not gonna work. <laughs> it. I'll find a mic. I've got spare mics. I'll find one to drop and then walk out. It'll be fine. I'm not dropping this. It's too expensive. All right. Anyway, uh, right. yes. So, uh, what am I doing? I would like to remind people, if you are watching the VOD of this, that my video for Shadowrun will be out. It is about 43 minutes long. It is fairly in-depth, as it usually is for stuff like that. So please do check that out if you want an impression of Shadowrun. 
if you're watching the uh, VOD, it, it should already be out. If you're watching the live stream, it's supposed to be out at midnight. There's currently a bit of disagreement as to when the embargo is. So I need to have a words with the PR agency again. And I could just selectively ignore it, but I don't like making enemies in this industry, so it's not a very good what? idea. They said EDT to me twice. All That's all I'm saying. Uh, anyway, so what else? There'll be the usual stuff. Content patch is up and running usually five days a week, assuming there's actually enough news to fill it. That's always nice. Sometimes it's just too boring a day, so we just don't do it. I'm sorry. That's how it is. Just... That's how it is. I would like to point people in the direction of our, our new series, Roleplay Dark Heresy, which is pen and paper. Over on YouTube.com slash ItMeJP, we are playing the Warhammer 40,000 role-playing game by the name of Dark Heresy, and it is as hilarious as you would expect. The other people playing are DJ Wheat, In Control from Team Evil Geniuses, StarCraft Team, and JP. And only two of them know anything about 40k, so it's about as Perfect. interesting as you might expect. The game master for that is actually Steve Lumpkin, who is a level designer on the forthcoming MMO Eternal Crusade. So, yes, he is working on the upcoming 40k MMO, and hopefully it won't be terrible, as we keep frequently reminding him. The next episode of that uh, live stream is probably going to be in about two weeks, because Steve, unfortunately, is out of town. So you can go and watch the part over on youtube.com slash itmejp. It's good. I also have the first part up on my channel, kind of as a promo for it, so you can go watch it there if you prefer not to give JP money, which is understandable. And is there anything uh, else? JP. Uh, uh, JP. Uh, JP all the time. Uh, brand new Shibuzi.com. You should go there. It looks great. It's okay. It does wonderful. look good. I went and looked. <laughs> good to know. And aside from that, I'm just thinking if there'll be, you know, there'll be the usual stuff. A couple more alpha strikes are expected. I will be looking into a couple of games that are blatantly not finished yet. And I will... I might even look at Elsword, actually, because that's interesting me. And I probably won't look at NASCAR the game 2013, because I hate them. I will. Yeah, you, <laughs> you feel free to do that. And I'll probably look at Raven the Master Thief as well, because that's actually surprisingly engaging. But And maybe there'll be a new Planet Side video if I get enough time to actually play it this week and fully digest all of the changes. Um, that, that's what you can expect from me over the course of the next seven or so days. And as regards to co-optional plays, we have no idea when that's starting. I'm not going to give you a promise. It will It will begin when we feel like it, and we'll probably build up several yeah. episodes before starting, because I have a feeling it'll go off the rails very quickly. So always, always good to know. Do check out youtube.com slash Polaris if you have not already. If you are seeing this podcast on Polaris, well, this is this is where it lives now. So it's really yeah. as simple Polaris as Polaris is my third channel, so I would definitely appreciate <laughs> you coming. Pretty much, yeah. It's, it's the Dodger channel where Dodger's in pretty much every damn show on it right now. That is it going. It won't always be like that. I promise. No, that's, it is going to change. That it's they're just kind of rolling out shows at a reasonable rate. A big shout out, of course, to everyone that supported the Pacific Rim Training Day video that we're in. That's now past a million views. So that's pretty cool. It is some great Power Ranger style camp. What can I say? A it's lot of people love it. You should yeah. too. Yep. It also has Robert Kaczynski in it, and there's a he nice. He was very nice. I met yes. him at Comic Con. Yes. Uh, he he He's used to watch my nice Wild dude. videos before he got famous, Look, as it turns yeah, out. Yeah. I might have heard that he was a fan, and I might have had to take a moment. <laughs> yep. I ran into him at the Dark Horse booth, and I was like, "Hey, I was at a thing with you." With you, I'm yeah. And he, like, immediately was just like, oh, my gosh, thank you guys so much for letting me do that. Like, I love TB and Jesse. Like, I'm I'm so glad I got to be in that. And I was like, I'm going to have to leave before my ego expands outside of the overlay. <laughs> it's like, what? This is awesome. No, so. he's actually great. And I, I will support that movie till the end of damn time. That's going to happen. Apparently, it was number one internationally this week, which is fantastic. I know, right? It's like, good. good please on them. support movies that tap into my childlike essence. Not enough of them do that anymore. Uh -huh. You know, it's it's so nice <laughs> to see that, and the, also there is a there is a special surprise at the end of that video for those of you who haven't watched it yet. I think you, you'll you'll love that. So yeah, Pacific Rim Training Day currently available on YouTube.com/slash/Polaris, and I think that wraps us up for the show. If you wish to follow us, I would suggest you do so on Twitter. Sounds like a pretty good idea. That's Total Biscuit or Cynical Brit. If you wish to avoid all of my bollocks and just wish to hear about the shows that are coming out, Dex Bonus for Dodger. Jesse yep. Cox and OMFG Cata 
for Jesse and James Portnow. And you should also, of course, follow the Extra Credits guys over at Extra... It's just Extra Credits, isn't it, if I recall correctly? <laughs> with a Z. With a Z, yes. Somebody yeah. Extra Credits with an S, and we can't get Twitter to get rid of them. Yep. They, Not they have one tweet. Yeah, not not no! that I would suggest horribly harassing them or anything. No, don't you, do that. You... that. It's not their fault. <laughs> you have extra credits with a Z, ladies and gentlemen, for that one. Please do go and follow them. And, of course, check out the weekly show over at Penny Arcade TV. Yep. I think that's pretty much us done. Done? Watch our YouTube channels. It's how we pay rent. Please. Yay! Thanks for watching, folks. Good night. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.